It's a beautiful day for a game with the sun shining down on the valley. Oh, how I love winter here in Phoenix. We head inside GCU Arena where women's basketball is heating up as the 11 and three Lopes welcome in whack opponent UT Rio Grande Valley. We have all the action right here as we welcome you into the Lopes pregame show driven by Nissan. Kate Longworth coming at you live here on Fox 10 Extra. And I know it's still early February, but believe it or not, we are just early in the conference action due to the COVID era. But although it's still new playing this whack uh, schedule for the Lopes, they are making their presence known in the conference, already leading several team and individual categories in the whack. From steals per game to turnover margin and check it out right now in that second spot with a three and one record behind the perfect Cal Baptist right now they are uh, still in the show. Meanwhile Seattle U behind Grand Canyon and the Vaqueros today's opponent. Well they are playing in their first ever conference matchup. So now for more details on how this will all play out we head over to two gentlemen who've had their eyes on this women's basketball team they've been uh, on the well by the court not on the court for several women's basketball games also watching their practices they've logged their time and now they set the stage Barry Mattel Scott Williams what can we count on for today's action uh, lots of excitement no doubt right Kate we are excited to uh, uh, see a Molly Miller coach team here on the floor against UTRGV Molly Miller the two time Division two coach of the year 180 and 17 overall the last six seasons Scott this is going to be impressive she is impressive I had a chance to watch her team play a couple Couple times they absolutely flat after get after their opponent a lot of pressure on defense cool full court they force a number of turnovers number one in the nation in the amount of turnovers that they create every game with 26 turnovers a game steals lead to easy points they score a tremendous amount of points 106 set a division one record this year I love the way she motivates her players she's almost got a wooden s quality yeah. to her always positive up upbeat and encouraging them to be able to be at their best every time that they step on the floor. Defend with intensity, lots of trapping. We're going to see it up and down from one baseline to the next. It's going to be exciting to see this team coached by Molly Miller. One of the players that we're excited about is the freshman, the former Gatorade Player of the Year from the state of Missouri, freshman Katie Scott. But Katie Scott has been absolutely sensational. She did something no WAC player has done in 31 years, wow. winning back to back to back WAC Player of the Week awards at the end of December and going into January. She's a, a, a pass first player that leads the team in scoring, believe it or not. Once played high school, in high school she played the point. Uh, so she really likes to pass. She likes to get her teammates involved. She can shoot from outside. She can go inside as well. 59% field goal percentage. She's getting it done. Yep, definitely getting it done. And one of the returners is Laura Piera, the point guard, the floor general, coming off a 17-point performance against Tarleton. Yeah, she was picked to be a second-team all-whack performance. She played like it last game out, as you mentioned, those 17 points, knocking in a couple long balls. as. Uh, 10th in the nation in steals as well. It's a lot of turnovers, leads to some easy points. I think it's the first because she's left-handed. It, it fools a lot of defenders, and she's very quick, and she takes advantage of it. Look at the scoring leaders for the Lopes. Katie Scott, Taylor Caldwell. We'll talk about Taylor as well throughout the course of this afternoon's game. But the Vaqueros are 4-5. and five. This is really their first whack play. I mean, they've been hit by COVID, much like the New Mexico State Aggies on the men's side. And so they're into their first whack game while the uh, Lopes come in 3-1 and one in conference play. But they're led by their leading scorer, Amara Graham. Yeah, Graham, can, <laughs> she can play. I mean, yeah. don't sleep on this little girl from Chicago, 5-6, bundle of energy, strokes her from the outside. She's got four games where she scored over 20 points. See the 50% shooting, likes to use her wheels, get in the late and cause havoc. So there we have it. It's the Vaqueros and the Lopes this afternoon at GCU Arena, the first of back-to-back -back games in conference play. We'll send it back downstairs to UK. All right, thank you guys. And while I have you, I just want to touch a little bit more on Molly Miller, the impressive resume she brings to um, the university and the program. Barry, I'm sure you can touch on that. And then also, Scott, what is it like from a player's perspective when you're playing from a coach like playing for a coach like this who has so much enthusiasm? I think we're seeing it pour onto the court for these players as well. That intensity. Yeah, her intensity, her energy is infectious. She makes everybody want to play hard. We want to run through a wall from her. Players get actually just 
press for 40 minutes, uh, and, and they wear teams down in the fourth quarter, outscoring teams by over 10 and a half points in the fourth quarter just because they're just relentless all game long. Yeah, she's not only relentless on the court, but she's relentless around campus as well. More than willing to give up her time to talk to students and be involved in just about anything because she wants this program to excel here at GCU, and the beginnings of it certainly are showing some positive signs, Kate. That is terrific, starting from the top there. Thank you so much, guys. We'll see you at the top of the hour. Meanwhile, we're talking a lot about Coach Miller. Well, we're not going to keep talking behind her back. That's not nice, right? So when we come back, we are going to go uh, get some more information from the source. We'll talk with head coach when we come back. Grand Canyon University, a Christian university, is one of the largest and fastest growing universities in the country. GCU offers 270 dynamic academic programs with modern apartment style living, classrooms, labs, restaurants, and more. Located in beautiful Phoenix, Arizona, GCU's vibrant community and expansive campus is ranked top 20 for best college campuses in America. My university integrates the free market system with a welcoming Christian worldview perspective into its academic programs and throughout campus life. So you can put your faith into action and help transform communities. GCU campus students received over $157 million in scholarships in 2020, and many students attend GCU for less than the cost of a state university. Visit gcu.edu slash myoffer to see the scholarships you qualify for. Admissible high school seniors can schedule a free visit from anywhere in the country. Find your purpose at Grand Canyon University. Visit gcu.edu slash myoffer. And then we'll be back with you on the 27th here on Fox 10 Extra for game two against Seattle University. But first, for today's game plan in this game one of this two game set with the Vaqueros, we send it over to Barry Battelle, who went straight to the source for the inside scoop earlier this afternoon. Thanks, Kate. I'm alongside uh, the head coach and coach 11 and three, three and one in the Western Athletic Conference. What's the current status of your team right now? How do you feel about it? I am love getting to know them. I think we get to know each other better every single day and we progress in how we want to play, um, how we want to represent our program, what the product on the floor looks like. Um, hopefully that evolves. Um, we want to peak at the right time. We're constantly learning. I think they're invested in that process of learning. Um, so again, now that we're kind of in the meat of conference season, that's a good thing for us and hopefully we can move that use that momentum going forward. The product on the, on the court, learning. If uh, you haven't watched GCU women's basketball under Coach Miller, Let's talk a little bit about it because it is a, a new style. It's an up tempo, a lot of ball movement. Uh, it is relentless. <laughs> yeah, relentless is a great word because um, that's what I want my kids to feel just all out energy, relentless energy, just go, 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 a fast pace, um, but also a fun brand of basketball. I think it's a fun brand to play. I think it's a great brand to watch. So I'm mm -hmm. excited for everyone to see it today on, on TV. And for us, it's just about playing hard and giving energy to each other and effort. Um, when they do that, I don't care about the little mistakes as long as they're playing hard and it's kind of go, go, go. The defensive intensity is kind of the cornerstone of who we are. And I think they're really buying into that, you know, being first in the with turnovers mm -hmm. forced is a testament to that. So very proud of them for kind of jumping on that bandwagon. Well, there's one uh, clip that really exemplifies uh, a, a lot of what you're instilling in this team. And it was against Park. Let's take a little look at this. There was one dribble on the inbound and that was it. Yeah, in the backcourt too. So, you know, sharing the basketball is really important to, to us. Being a great teammate is kind of one of our pillars for success. So this kind of emulates that um, in one play. Very nice. Yeah, it was uh, it was touched by a number of, of players on the court, and as you mentioned, that one dribble was in the backcourt. A lot of ball movement, and a lot of players are contributing. A lot of newcomers are contributing, and the biggest one, perhaps, is the freshman, the uh, former 
Gatorade Player of the Year in the state of Missouri, and that's Katie Scott. What have you seen this season uh, from her? She seems poised right off the get-go. Yeah, she is a great composed player, so not much is going to rattle her. Very, very, very skilled. Has a lot of opportunities to score on the inside and the outside. She's got a three-point game, as you saw there. She can drive it from the outside, too. She's just a really great skilled player, and she's learning kind of the ups and downs of, of college ball. Um, there's mm -hmm. the highs and lows for a freshman, and you kind of have to take those bumps in a road, as well as Tierra, our other freshman starter. So both those two are kind of having a major impact for us right from the get-go. Not a lot of position that a lot of freshmen are in this early, but we're really proud of their growth and we're seeing them progress throughout the year, which is nice because they are such a big contributor. Yeah, and one that's coming back, kind of that veteran uh, leader perhaps, is, is Taylor Caldwell. Coming back from a, a devastating knee injury, what have you seen from her? I mean, her journey, it's been tough, obviously. You come back from an injury, you mm -hmm. get the game taken away from you, but um, I've liked her aggressiveness from the get-go. She's a savvy player for us. She's um, very fundamental in what she does. Um, and I think she's kind of latching on to that role of being a defender. And she wants those steals and get out in passing lanes. And she's leading the conference right now in steals. And her mm -hmm. and LP are kind of going back and forth with that. So that's kind of a fun, friendly rivalry. They want to play defense. So um, it's a great thing to see those two, especially TC, come back after that injury. Yeah, Taylor Caldwell, back-to-back double-digit scoring in the uh, sweep against Tarleton. And you mentioned LP, Laura Piera. She is the point guard, tons of energy on the court. How do you see her uh, this afternoon playing you know, against... I uh this team. I love coaching point guards because I was yeah, a point guard exactly. myself. So I feel like we have that bond. Um, you know, she's she can have a motor for us. She plays hard, which I love, which fits my system beautifully. Um, so our connection is just growing. Um, I tell her she's me out on the court. You know, she's my mouthpiece and she's the leader out there. So it's really fun to see LP to kind of come into this system and have success right away. And she's coming off a 17 point game against Tarleton as well. Now you're facing a UTRGV team that Unfortunately, with COVID, this is their first whack uh, game. Do you know what you're going to be facing here? How have you been able to scout the uh, Vaqueros? Yeah, you know, they played a non-conference game against Tarleton, who we just played. Mm -hmm. um, so we've got a little bit of game film on them from their non-conference slate. And, you know, they're, they're a good team that has five capable players on the court all at one time. So you have to guard everyone. Um, you have to be ready for them to get downhill on the dribble drive. But they've also got some great shooters mm -hmm. on the perimeter. So we're going to have to do a really good job defensively. We're going to have to be solid. And then offense, we just need to make them work on the offensive end. I mean, our game is pace, so we don't want to slow down the pace when we get the ball offensively. We want to make them work defensively. So it's going to be a great game. They're very well coached. Um, me and Coach Lane Lord go way back. He coached at Pitt when I was at Drury. Yeah. So we come up from the D2 ranks together. So um, he's a great friend, an awesome coach. So I'm looking forward to today's game. Tremendous. Good luck this afternoon. Thank you very much. All right. Head coach Molly Miller will send it back over to you, Kate. All right. Thank you, Barry. Great to get some inside scoop from Coach Molly Miller. Looking forward to seeing how this all plays out. And game, team, game day at GCU, it's really all about the experience. So when we come back, we get the party, the dance party story started. I will explain all on the other side. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. How does a chicken sandwich become a Whataburger spicy chicken sandwich? Is it by slathering it in a fiery sauce or adding some crazy hot toppings? Nah. If the chicken in the chicken sandwich wants to be spicy, it has to come from the inside. By marinating it in spices, frying it up, then cooling it off with fresh veggies. All on a new brioche bun. Good thing flavor can come from within. Good thing there's the new limited time spicy chicken sandwich at Whataburger. I would say to anybody considering maybe skipping graduation to spend a long time thinking about participating, I think it's a great opportunity to really take advantage of a moment that you only get once in your life. It, it's an opportunity to really experience something that highlights all the hard work that you've put in. Not very many people get to experience that in their life. It's such an honor and a privilege to be able to do that and I think the memories that come out of that are just incredible. Herf Jones, by your side. Welcome back to the Lopes pregame show driven by Nissan. We're getting you set for a 2 p.m. tip tonight, or today rather, between the Lopes and the Vaqueros. The Vaqueros playing in their first official whack action. Meanwhile, the Lopes already have three wins and they are getting ready to keep it going. And we always talk about game day being experienced at GCU, which is why we bring in our next guest, Jackie Young-Cook, who is the 
dance director for the team here. She is a head coach for the dance team. And going back to that experience you get here when you come to a GCU game, how do you guys all come together between you and the cheer squad and then also the band to make this uh, enjoyable experience, whether you're watching at home or you're inside the arena? We have a really unique environment here at GCU as far as our spirit program is concerned. We meet on a weekly, actually bi-weekly basis just to kind of plan out what the experience looks like for our students when they come to games and we've got an excellent working relationship with band, with cheer, with dance, with the Havocs, the mascot, uh, Thunder. It's, it's really something special we have here at GCU and we take pride in working together and making um, the whole game day experience as a whole. And, you know, nationwide, um, the atmosphere here has gotten garnered a lot of attention over the years. People talk about how this is an incredible atmosphere to come and play in. And at the end of the game, you also see the GCU players um, giving, you know, a hats off to everyone who's involved from the spirit clubs to the fans in the house. Yeah. So what pride do you take that the energy the dance team brings to this game plays out on the court? You truly help that six man atmosphere. That's something that we also really focus on is that we're never opposed for our, we're never against the opponents, we're always for our lopes. And so creating that family experience, really loving on our lopes, regardless of the sport and being a part of that atmosphere has definitely garnered a really good relationship between all of the sports on campus. And we're glad that you and the dance team are still a part of the game day experience, even in this COVID era, but I know things have changed. Safety is of utmost importance here at GCU. So how has COVID affected your team and how everything happens when it plays out here on TV on a game day? It has been a unique year, that is for sure. There's testing on a weekly basis. There is a lot of monitoring of making sure that we're safe, that we're being um, held to that same standard that all the athletes are. And so there has been a lot of changes, wearing a mask constantly. You know, there's just things that are different. However, we've been really blessed to find our way through it and and not see it as a no and find the yeses within the restrictions. So. That, that's awesome because I, I love that because it is kind of a no era right now. So it's great that you guys have found a way to still keep that spirit alive. Right then we were just watching a performance um, that's aired here during GCU Arena on the big screen. Um, how are you guys still bringing the performances to the game action and how is it affecting competition? Because you guys have been so competitive over the years across the nation. Yes. Yeah, so we have had the unique opportunity to be able to record performances for games, which has been fun to be able to keep that going forward in training and getting ready for nationals. So nationals for us has moved from January to being in April this year. And we're just really excited that it's still on the calendar and That's that we're great. still training and moving forward. And we're actually really in the middle of our learning and cleaning process to go forward and um, to still represent GCU on the nationals floor. Well, we wish you the best of luck. And before I let you go, I want to talk about what must be, I imagine, a very spirited household for you. <laughs> Your husband, Paul, is uh, the band director here. What is it like at home? Um, what do you guys like? And also, I mean... <laughs> He must know the routines, too. This is your dance team and your husband getting down, right? There's times where I feel like I'm maybe coaching him on the sideline more than my teams. Uh, but yes, no, he, he loves being a part of it. We, we obviously bleed purple as a household, and it's been really fun. It's a unique experience that we get to work together here and uh, love what we do and be able to pour ourselves into it wholeheartedly. Well, Jackie, thank you so much. We always have so much fun. And the job that you're doing, I know this year more than ever, it's stepped up because of what you have to go through. But thank you for the fun that you bring to the atmosphere. And we're excited for it to play out for the folks at home today on Fox 10 Extra as well. And when we come back, we keep the party going. I don't know if he dances, but he sure can coach a great volleyball squad. When we come back, we talk with head coach Tim Nolan right on the other side. We'll be right back been to hell and back there's not much left to fear when the boogeyman goes to sleep at night he checks under his bed for me have you ever wondered who waldo's hiding from me not even the cougars of la are enough to scare me but if i get into an accident i'm calling the boss sweet james if you've been hurt don't back down call sweet james From reimagining the way you work to reassessing what you need, you've changed the way you do business. And now, so have we. 
with no annual contracts and flexible internet and voice solutions, you'll have what you need to get back to business. Rethink, reconnect, reimagine. Switch to Cox Business today. Welcome back, bringing you women's basketball action, Division One action here on Fox 10 Extra. As the Lopes get ready to take on whack opponent, UT Rio Grande Valley, we are going to have all the action at the top of the hour. But right now, we're checking in on campus here at GCU, seeing how all sports are handling um, crazy schedules, trying to survive during these crazy times, just like we all are. And so now I bring in women's head volleyball coach, Tim Nolan. Coach, thank you so much for being here with us. And um, it was exciting when when GCU was able to bring you over here to the program. You had nearly a decade with USC and uh, the success followed you, it seems, here to GCU because now five years in the books and um, almost 50 wins, you're at 49 and your record just continually continues to climb and show that progression. So what has it been like for you since taking over here at GCU? Sure, you know, it's, it's been great. It's been a process, you know, instilling culture, instilling, mm -hmm. you know, our values and our systems, and then recruiting the type of athletes that, you know, want to play at that level. Uh, and it takes some time and more time than I would like it to, but uh, we're here and we're not going to go anywhere. And we talked about uh, that steady climb. I think when you were hired here, this is how you want it to play out on paper. It's playing out on the court that way, where you're able to go out there with a great product each year and then somehow come back the next year, bring in more recruits, uh, you know, garner more victories. How has that been playing out for you as you've been getting that culture installed and, and they're buying it on the court? Yeah, you know, it's... Uh... It's been a process, like I said, but being able to recruit every year and every year we've been able to win some really big recruiting battles. Uh, and that translates to being able to go out on the court and win some big battles on the court. And, you know, last year coming out at 24 and 6 and, you know, going out every night believing we're supposed to win is just a really big deal. And, and that's how we want to be. And I imagine after finishing with a 24 and 6 record, all you're saying is we can't wait to get back on the court for the next season. Well, then the world as we know it changes and all of a sudden you're 14 months without a match. What was that like? What did your team go through? And then we'll also talk about what it was like to reunite playing. But what was it like those 14 month layover during that 14 month layover? You know, it was difficult. Um, it was really an exercise in mental discipline, trying to, you know, keep kids motivated and, and help them find ways to work out at home on their own and, and being able to lift at home with whatever they had and, and train by themselves. And, you know, volleyball is kind of a unique game in that you really need a partner to help you practice. Yeah. You can't do a lot by yourself. So. You know, that part was difficult, but like I said, they bought in. Um, they really found ways to, you know, from pushing their mom's car up the hill to, <laughs> to running around the parking lot, they found ways to train and, and to continue to get better. Have you noticed a change, too, um, in talking with um, Coach Miller and um, Coach Drew? They've talked about the chemistry of the team in this unique way that you never would have created for your team to bond. But have they been able to bond throughout this? Yeah, you know, adversity it brings you together, it destroys yeah. you. So the teams that have come together are the ones that are going to be successful. And I would say it has definitely done that for us as well. Uh, you know, you face some unique challenges and, and some lineups and kids missing because of reasons you could have never imagined. But they all seem to want to win. And we've just kind of adopted this motto of anybody, any day. You know, okay. we don't care who we're playing. We're going to roll out a lineup with whoever we got, and we're going to find a way to win. It's great because you're instilling confidence in all of those players. It doesn't matter, upperclassmen, new freshmen. They're able to go out there and make their presence known for the Lopes. And it seems like you guys were able to do that as you finally started conference action. You were able to get back out on the court. What was it like last week? Um, I mean, the, the results were great because you guys are uh, now perfect in whack play with your two wins. But what was that like for you guys to be back out in play in action? You know, I think it was just a matter of showing them that, hey, all your hard work has really paid off. You know, your patience uh, in these 14 months that you've been training at home and back on campus and then, you know, in quarantines and, and, you know, all the different protocols that all the athletic teams have to go through, really. Uh, and it's just, it shows you how special this group really is. And what is it like now that you guys are kind of involved in a, a sprint, if you will, <laughs> over eight weeks? You know, you'll face whack action, I know. Unfortunately, you get started and COVID canceled the match. But what is it like for you guys right now where really you always preach that every game counts, but uh, you're not kidding when you face in conference opponent every every week. Monday, you've got Dixie State here. Yeah, you know, it is it is a sprint and it's uh, it's going to be challenging to the team that, again, can find ways to be creative and win back to backs, which is not easy. 
Um, you know, you either have to be substantially better or you have to be a little lucky sometimes to win that back to back. But the teams that are able to do it are the teams that can survive. And I think we've found the right formula. And I think the kids are bought in. Now we just have to go out every night and execute. And what is it like for you guys? I mean, I know we can kind of put COVID aside, but for you and your team, when you come inside GC Arena, um, I love, because we were last year covering a couple baseball games, and a lot of D-backs, former players, current players, they were here. And they heard about the excitement over here with volleyball playing, and they wanted to walk over and see what was happening. What is it like that game day? We're kind of talking about that game day atmosphere you feel, whether it's a basketball game or women's volleyball, it, you feel the presence here. Yeah, you know, it's. Uh, I think it's the best atmosphere in college athletics. I really do. You know, President Mueller and Jamie Boggs and, and you know, all the way from cheer and dance to the Havocs to the band, they just put together such a great product and it's what makes us so special. It's what allows us to go out and win some of those big recruiting battles. You know, there's always fans in the stands. Even in COVID years, you know, we have cutouts in there. Right. Uh, and it just, they find a way to make it special and unique and the university loves it and that's why the kids come out and support. All right. Well, we wish you the best of luck in this season and uh, stay safe and have fun out there. And we will continue the fun here on the Lopes pregame show. It is a smaller crowd here due to safety protocols, but I'll tell you what, it is still a purple pregame party. We'll explore more when we come back right after. This. It's time to get away. It's time to escape. It's a new day to play. Your retreat awaits at Talking Stick Resort. Indulge your appetite for excitement with our thrilling table games, our electrifying slots, our outstanding restaurants, and our exceptional accommodations. It's all waiting for you. It's a new day to play at Talking Stick Resort. Play in style. When life seems uncertain, there's one credit union that provides both dollars and cents. Copper State Credit Union. With solutions that focus on our members, you can take advantage of competitive rates, free cash back checking, and local attentive service. Uplifting our community is a standard we live by. That's why thousands of your Arizona neighbors rely on us. Strengthening Arizona families through financial empowerment. That's Copper State Credit Union. Welcome back to the Lopes pregame show pre driven by Nissan. We're just moments away from today's tip off here on Fox 10 Extra. The Lopes going up against the Vaqueros who are playing in their first conference action due to this COVID era. However, the conference play does go on in Seattle University. Georgia's player, Georgia Kehoe, was named the WAC player of the week. Meanwhile, Cal Baptist has won 15 straight games to start the season. And oh yeah, that's the Lopes next opponent. Meanwhile, Utah Valley beat Chicago state 61 53 last night they're both in action this afternoon and as we bring you action today we'll be watching the lopes and we'll be zeroed in on this player katie scott she may be a freshman but she is composed beyond her years and it's impressive she comes from a small town in missouri carl junction she was the Missouri High School Gatorade Player of the Year. She ranked first in high school in her graduating class when it came to her studies, her favorite show, The Office, her favorite food, the Chinese food. And what's impressive about Katie Scott is not only is she playing basketball, a new system under a new head coach with Molly Miller, but she also is a freshman here on campus during um, COVID times. So she is learning how to uh, navigate college courses online and then head to practice, safety in mind, all very impressive at a young age. And what I'm excited about is how it all plays out on the court today. And we're excited to have you along for the ride. Women basketball division one action on its way we're bringing you all the lopes action you can handle this afternoon big game tomorrow uh-uh big game starts right after this going got tough many people bunkered down dealerships turned to mundane sales online with impersonal deliveries not sanderson ford we chose to work even harder and provide more personalized service and value in our showroom or you can shop from home buy from home and we'll deliver we've been delivering vehicles to our customers for over 65 years call luis gonzalez hey david i'm just pulling in with your new truck wow i'm blown away thanks for the personalized service
When I think back on graduation day, it's such a special moment, walking across the stage, hearing your name called. I think I would really regret not walking. I think being able to finish out a long college experience with an awesome moment like graduation is really special. If I hadn't decided to walk that day, I think I'd regret not having that sense of closure and accomplishment for that huge chapter in my life. My name's Noah and I graduated in 2015. My name is Lauren and I graduated in 2016. Perf Jones, by your side. Live from the heart and soul of Phoenix, welcome to the campus of Grand Canyon University and inside GCU Arena, where this afternoon the 11 and 3 Lopes host the 4 and 5 Vaqueros. Good afternoon and welcome to GCU Women's Basketball alongside three-time NBA champion Scott Williams. I'm Barry Butel. Kate Longworth will be along in just a moment. Well, it's our first televised broadcast of GCU Women's Basketball. They're off to a 3-1 conference start, but we see the Molly Miller era begin here on TV this afternoon. Man, I am hyped. I would play for Molly Miller for <laughs> sure. She, she is absolutely electric. She really gets her team fired up a play, and these girls love to compete for her for 40 minutes. 180 and 17, the last six seasons at Drury and D2, the two-time coach of the year, leading the Lopes into action this afternoon. And we'll be looking at their freshman, Katie Scott, their leading scorer. Yeah, Junction Junction from Junction, Missouri. She is absolutely fantastic. She's won the WAC Player of the Week award three times in a row, it's something that hasn't been done in 31 years. Combines her inside power game with a nice touch from the outside. A actual pass first score, if you can believe that. And for the Vaqueros, her first WAC play is today, and their leading score is Amara Graham. Yeah, Graham is tremendous. She can absolutely flat out put that ball in the hole. She's been over 20 point plateaued 20 times this year. Shoots 50% from the field, can rebound the basketball, and she's cat quick. And oh, don't turn your back on her because she will take that ball away from you. We shall see. It's time to get it tipped off here. Let's go down to the public address announcer, Paul Denuser, with our opening prayer. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome once again to the beautiful GCU Arena for this afternoon's Western Athletic Conference women's basketball matchup featuring the Vaqueros of University of Texas, Rio Grande Valley, and your Grand Canyon University Antelopes. Ladies and gentlemen, at this time, we ask that you all please rise if you are able. Gentlemen, please remove your caps as we begin this afternoon's competition with the word of prayer. Today's prayer is led by Tim Warner, a master's student studying accounting and a GCU cheerleader. Bow your heads with me. God, I thank you for the opportunity to gather here together for a game of basketball. Lord, I pray for your hand of protection over the students, the athletes, and the faculty gathered here in the arena today. Um, we'll be just be able to glorify you through our actions, conversation, and sportsmanship. Lord, we, uh, we love you, and we thank you again for the blessing you show us every day, Lord. And it's in your name we pray. Amen. Thank you, Tim. The UT Rio Grande Valley Vaqueros are 4-5. and five. They're coming off a 79-63 loss against Tarleton on January 27th. Their head coach in his third season is Lane Lord. Here is his starting five this afternoon, brought to you by Talking Stick Resort. Amara Graham, Jenna Williams, Jordan Lewis, Sarah Bershears, and Jessica Martino. Yeah, we're going to keep our eye on number 33, Sarah Bershears, a six-foot card from Fort Smith, Arkansas. Yeah, that's right. Shout out to Northside High School. She's coming off one of her better performances of the year. Got to keep your eye on her when she's out there on the floor. Associate Head Coach Kevin Hackerot. Epac Turk Yildamov and Kiana Keys are the assistant coaches for the Vaqueros from UT Rio Grande Valley. Time now to introduce you to GCU.
is the starting five for head coach Molly Miller, Laura Piera, Taylor Caldwell, and Dejan Jackson, Piera Brown, and Katie Scott. We'll be watching the Spaniard tonight, the 5'8 junior point guard from Barcelona, Spain, Piera. LP, they, uh, Coach Miller calls her. She was the second all-team WAC performer coming into the season. She had 17 points last time out against Tarleton State. The assistant coaches are Emily Ragsdale, Buck Sheel, and Karyla Middlebrook. Director of Basketball Strategies and Player Development, Gret Gottlieb. Dur graduate assistant is Dajay Black. The athletic trainer is Terika Stewart. And the strength and conditioning coach is Stephen Wright. Time now for our Sanderson Ford. Three keys to the game. Sanderson Ford, the best play at a new Ford, is at Sanderson Ford. Yeah, it's Miller time. This team is absolutely an extension of what Coach Miller wants to do uh, on the floor. Relentless defense to create turnovers. This team's number one in the nation, forcing 26.3 turnovers a game. They score 106 points, creating using those turns to create easy opportunities to score. They're, uh, they're 33rd in the nation. Uh, and scoring this year and then power up the machine play inside out and through the middle They got a tremendous advantage inside with Smith. Excuse me with Scott inside Go inside create opportunities for the outside shooters and drivers down the lane then hey sister go sister soul sister flow sister wow. energy that's what Molly Miller wants from her bench when they come up off the floor They want to keep the pressure on this team and try to wear them down both teams are spent when they go into the fourth quarter against the Lopes, where the Lopes outscore their opponents by ten and a half a game. You run that whole sister th thing again? That was that was <laughs> our little lady marmalade. Yeah. <laughs> As you see, Laura Piera, the officials, Darren Rutznik, Corey Long, and Esther Sue. Great atmosphere, adhering to the attendance guidelines. All part of it, along with the Havocs here, bring a spirited atmosphere here at GC Arena this afternoon. So glad you could join us. We are underway with the Vaqueros in possession. Bringing it up, Williams. Kick back out, Graham, their leading scorer. Drives in the paint, pushes back out, long distance, high arcing shot, off the mark. Rebound pulled down by Tierra Brown. Quickly up the court. Loose ball picked up there by Jackson. Picked back out. Caldwell. To Piera. Left wing up high. Looking for Brown underneath. Loose ball pushed out. Possession. Lopes with nine on the shot clock. I like the way the Lopes try to look inside. They tried to pass the ball over the top of the defense on the fast break. Didn't get it. Looked to go back inside a second time. Almost had an easy bucket at the rim. Katie Scott to inbound quickly to Piera. Got the fresh 20. Jackson quickly. Hold run. Back to Brown. Jackson. Pivots in the paint. Underhand doesn't go. Vicaro's pulled down the rebound. Well, two attempts right at the rim and couldn't get either one of them to go down. We've got a foul on the backboard here. Nadeja Jackson called. Native of Oakland. This is something that you're going to see all game long. This full court pressure by the Lopes. Really trying to put a lot of pressure on the ball handlers. And I think they got a turnover there. Stepped they in the backcourt. Great pressure there by Jackson on Jordan Lewis. Yeah, used the coffin corner to their advantage that time. Got the Picaro player to catch that ball right on the other side of half court. You use the sideline, the half court line, and you put a defender, becomes a, a coffin, which the offensive player can't operate and they end up turning the basketball over. Katie Scott leads for Caldwell. Jackson. Steps back, moves right, top of the key, kicks back out. Scott pulls it down. Jumper, good! Katie Scott gets the lumps on the board. Well, Katie Scott, you think with uh, 
her, her ability to be able to pound people inside. She was always hanging around on the basket, but she played point guard one year in high school when the starting point guard broke her foot. So she's got the ability to step outside and play as well. Off the mark by Bershears. Lopes doing a nice job controlling their defensive glass. Just one and done for the Pacaros twice now down the floor. All's well. Danny Scott. Fouled by Jessica Martino. Yeah, for a freshman, she's got a high basketball IQ. She played with against her older sister, who's a college basketball player as well. That time utilizing that little ball fake. They know what a diddly outside shooter she can be if she gets hot. So they come out on her tight, and then she just a little ball fake and puts the ball on the floor, draws the foul. Impressive start. Here to inbound. Tierra Brown, Caldwell, Piera beyond the arc. Back to Caldwell, looks inside to Scott. Foul underneath again, that's quick two on Martino. Yeah, and Scott does a really nice job that time, really established her position on that low block. Waiting for the ball to swing back to her, and then when she got it, she wasted no time going into a, a drop step. And nice power move around the basket. She has told her coaching staff she kind of wants to be feared when she's out there on the floor. And I think as a big, me being a former big, that's what you want. You want to be able to put a little fear in the defense when you catch the ball down that close to the basket. But they have to worry about you putting it in the hole. Coach Lord had to take Martino out with those quick two fouls. Buju Soy Sal in the game for the Vaqueros. Back-to-back -back buckets there from the line. Not only a 56% you know, shooter from the field, but 76% shooter from the free throw line as well. So nice all-around touch. Williams gets the ball, poked away, loose ball, kept. Oh, that was close. Good hustle by Tierra Brown. Yeah, that's one thing we'll be tracking. We'll be tracking the number of steals. We mentioned Lopes, number one in the nation, forcing 26.3 steals per game. But it's also the little deflections like they, that that they get. It causes a disruption in the other team's offense. Now they only have 13 seconds to shoot, and they haven't even got the ball over half court yet. Incredible. Graham. Scott has all four early buckets. Graham in the paint, trying to find some room underneath. So Sal kicks it out. No shot. Shot clock violation. It all started by that little poke away with about six tenths, uh, six seconds or so ticked off that clock. Really left the Vaqueros with a short shot clock to work with, and they couldn't get anything going. Lopes defense off to a great start right now. Opening quarter underway. Pierre brings it up. Looks right, Scott tries, kick back out, Caldwell, bounce pass right back to Katie Scott, back to Piera, throws up the three, off to Mark, rebound, pulled down by Bello Savage. Graham, shut down a swarm of lopes surrounding. Bello Savage, open look, off the Mark, rebound underneath Lewis, and she's fouled. Well, the, the, the double team on the left side of the floor left a mismatch of more offensive players than defensive players. They gave up the outside shot, but they just could not, for the first time, rebound that miss. And Scott picks up her first foul, not wanting to give up the easy bucket inside. You know, she went in her last game, Barry. She, in 22 minutes, scored 20 points. Uh, just a tremendous score, a good feel around the basket. And the Vaqueros are on the board. Lewis gets the first of two. In the ball game for the Vaqueros, number 21, Tiffany McGarrity. Tiffany McGarrity comes in. Brashears returned as well for the Vaqueros. Baldwell to Scott. Scott to Piera. 80. Hands it back to Piera. She drives, stop, little floater, and it finds its way in. Oh, a little dribble handoff, and LP just turns the corner and takes it right into the heart of the defense and gets it in the hole. I, mean, I think that last game where she had the 17 points has really got her in the aggressive mode right now. A couple already early field goals. She's one for two right now. 
four-point Lopes lead. Graham surrounded by Scott and Piera. Eight on the shot clock. Seven driving. I think that's a good call. Called the block. I, I, oh, wow. <laughs> yeah, I, I thought that they were there. They were planting their feet and took that uh, co uh, contact head on. <laughs> she can't believe it. I, I was having a cup of coffee down here waiting for a young lady to come through the middle of the lane, and I kind of have to agree. She, she looked like she was outside the restricted area yeah. just hanging out, waiting. Jenna Williams at the line. Four of six. You know, it, it, one thing Williams did really good, though, she was able to get just to the outside shoulder uh, of the defender that time. And, one of those bang bang plays right there the official sees the offensive player kind of get outside the shoulder blades of the defender a lot of times they'll get whistled for being aggressive and, and uh, giving the block call this ball picked up by the lopes on the free throw miss all of the points coming at the line Caldwell, Piera. Inside to Scott, turns, nice move, doesn't go, gets the own rebound and puts it home. Oh, she loves it, lets out a yell after that one. She's working hard inside for those buckets. Carroll's bring it up, dribble, dribble. Good job closing out on that shooter, caused the travel. Look at this one more time by Scott inside, swings that left shoulder to that strong right hand hook. Doesn't get it to go, but doesn't give up on the play. Love that tenacity down there offensively goes in there and fights off two hard shirts gets the ball back in the hole gets a little blow well deserved rest but she got six early points yep. Caldwell puts it up doesn't go but Carroll's pull it down so he sound Jones off the glass Three-point lead early on opening quarter. I think I think Coach Miller would be happy with the pace of this game. This is going to favor the Lopes for sure. Turnaround doesn't go, but Carroll's with the rebound. Momentum switching back a little bit towards UTRGV. Graham, three-pointer, good! Oh, Ties it up. She's so good at dribbling that ball, getting the defense back on their heels, stopping behind that line, getting herself back on balance. Knocked it down. Baldwell up top, short back to Caldwell. Piera approaching four and a half to go, opening quarter. Piera drives, left hand off the glass. I think the defense sometimes forgets she's left-handed. She is so good at getting by, taking that ball from the right side of the floor to the left side, flipping it in with her left paw. Jones kicks it back out. Williams back to Jones. Jones. Guarded by Piera, back to Graham, who just hit the three. Piera moving up tight. Williams lost the handle, kick back to Graham for three. Off the mark. Rebound, Kennedy Short. Great back job to defensively like that. And great communication. Molly Miller calls Piera her mouthpiece on the floor. She was definitely talking to her teammates. Worked out well for them on that defensive possession. Piera in the paint. Doesn't go, kicked out, nice job by Shorts to push it back out. Really did, slap that ball, kept it a lot. Yana Brown in the game for the Lopes, Caldwell. Here a wide open look for three, good! Oh, when you're hot, you're hot. You do a couple inside, then you knock down the triple from behind the arc. Nice job uh, swinging that ball in rotation, finding the hot shooter in the corner. 13 to 8, the Lopes with this first quarter lead. Barry Vitale, Scott Williams, Kate Longworth with you at GCU Arena. We're seeing it. We're seeing that Molly Miller influence, that style of play. It's tenacious. It's trapping early on. They are relentless. The Vaqueros trying to get the ball up the court. She says she likes the way her players fly around the court, and that's what you're seeing out there uh, in the early going. Just a lot of energy, a lot of action, whether it's inside, outside, dribble, handoff, screen and roll, pick and pop. They're doing it all. Let's look at uh, Laura Piera, Katie Scott. They've been uh, heard from here early on. 
Well, I love I love this one right here because it's just a little dribble handoff, but she comes off of that strong left hand dribble and is able to beat the defenders and get into that paint. And this one right here, a little skip pass, sag off me too far. Play me for the drive and I'll burn you with the outside three. Oh, and then here's another one by Katie Scott. I love that one right there. You know, you, you show the little pump fake, put the ball on the floor once, get by the defense and dock it in, and then go inside, use your power game, stay on that glass and finish. That impressive start by uh, LP and Katie Scott here to start this basketball game. 13 points between the two. Seven for Biera, six for Scott. Let's send it down to Kate Longworth. All right. Thank you guys. It's a lot of fun to watch basketball this new era under coach Molly Miller her first year with the Lopes but she's bringing that up tempo and uh, what she calls a fun brand of basketball and you can see it. You can see it playing out on the court. These ladies want to go out there obviously get the W but also focusing on uh, their energy and their energy is showing and she was, before coming here, making her name in Division II basketball. Coach Miller was a two-time Division II Coach of the Year after garnering 180 victories in six seasons at Drury University. At the same university, she also was the 2008 Division II third-team All-American selection. And really what's so fun to watch about Coach Miller is she cares. And you see that, you see how much she loves the game of basketball. It's contagious for her players, and I hope today that translates for the viewers at home as well. No doubt. Graham, looking to drive, shut down by Piera, picked off. Up comes Brown, off the window and in for Tiana. That's what they do, full court pressure, half court pressure, get those turnovers and lead to easy buckets. Lopes on a 7 nothing run right now. Four turnovers by the Vaqueros, four points off of those turnovers. Look at that, just getting to that oh, passing oh, lane oh, right oh, there, oh, snag that oh, basketball oh, and oh, put it in the bucket. I, you gotta like that. I mean, to come out of that timeout, full court pressure, you think they're about to get burned over the top with that long pass down to Graham, but they hustle back. Get back on position and then get the turnover and they're racing back the other way on offense. sure who wouldn't want to play this style of basketball. A lot of people don't want to work this hard, Barry. You'd That's be true. surprised. It's not easy. I mean, the suicides and ladder drills and all the sprint work you got to do, you got to be in, in condition to play this style of basketball for 40 minutes. The D by Piera. Knocked that out. 2.47 on the clock. The Carrows will throw it in with 11 on the shot clock. Oh, yeah, there's no doubt about it. Yeah, you're going to be in the, probably the best shape of your life. Yeah, hustle's a skill. Uh, you've got to work on it just like anything else. Yeah. Almost lost the handle. Look at that. They just shot them down. Yeah. The shot clock just expired. That's the second shot clock violation in this first quarter. So, I mean, I call that a turnover, don't you call well, that a turnover, Barry? So, you know, chalk up another one. We're going to keep the little turnover meter going. We had the, the mid-guard field goal meter, the turnover yeah. meters at five. Yeah, we're yeah. going to watch that. We're going we're to check in every quarter to see <laughs> how many they can force it uh, in a quarter. Scott. Dribble, kick out. Shorts. Drives baseline. How about that sweet reverse off the window? <laughs> that was fantastic. She got that ball in the corner and just took off like she was shot out of the cannon. Put it in reverse and flipped it in off the glass. Kennedy Shorts, the junior from Long Beach, California. Coach Lord over there must be wondering what is going on. I thought we had this. I thought we had him under control when they tied it at eight. And the Lopes has just peeled away here to finish the, this uh, first quarter action. Sanchez in the game for the Vaqueros. Graham looking to make a nice move, doesn't go. Piero. Setting it up, Graham in her face. Schwartz comes over, frees her up a bit, drives. Left-hander, hand on it, Brashears. A nice recovery by the six-foot Brashears. She's a guard, so she does a good ability to be able to move her feet. But look at this one one more time. And sure, she just was shot out of a cannon, like I said, out of, the, out of that corner there. And nobody was able to get in front of her in time. What an easy lay-in. Scott. 
Katie Scott's got a good ball handling skills. Yeah. Six on the shot clock. Piera, four. Looks to drive. Floater off the glass. A little too heavy, but Carroll's at the rebound. Quickly up. Grant. Looking right. Turns around. Too heavy there for Brashears. Picked up by Scott. Nice job. Rebound in traffic. A lot of arms, a lot of hands banging against her. And she put two hands on the thing and controlled that ball and got the nice outlet pass. And Lopes are off running again. Jumper off the mark by Caldwell. Under a minute to go. Opening quarter. Picked off. Piera. Six. Sheesh. I'll tell you what, nice double team again. Carroll's going to have to watch that half court strike. They have a tendency. Oh, here we go. Scott for three. Yeah, they're having a tendency to pick that ball up on the other side of half court. It just leads to an easy trapping situation for the shirts, for the white shirts. Lewis. Three point attempt by the Vaqueros rings out. Vaqueros have done ice cold the last four and a half minutes of this game. They have got. No points whatsoever. A couple shot clock violations and some turnovers. Now the Lopes can play for the last shot of the quarter. 9 0 run over the last four minutes for the Lopes. Kennedy Shorts. Now the first quarter comes to a close 17 to 8. The Lopes over the Vaqueros. After the Lopes swept Tarleton, they're looking to do so in this back-to-back -back series against UTRGV. We'll be right back with second quarter play after we take this timeout. We made USAA insurance for members like Kate, a former Army medic made of the flexibility to handle whatever Monday has in store and tackle four things at once. So when her car got hit, she didn't worry. She simply filed a claim on her USAA app and said, I've got this. USAA insurance has made the way Kate needs it. Easy. She can even pick her payment plan, so it's easy on her budget and her life. USAA. What you're made of, we're made for. USAA. It's time to get away. It's time to escape. It's a new day to play. Your retreat awaits at Talking Stick Resort. Indulge your appetite for excitement with our thrilling table games, our electrifying slots, our outstanding restaurants, and our exceptional accommodations. It's all waiting for you. It's a new day to play at Talking Stick Resort. Play in style. GCU Basketball is brought to you in part by Sanderson Ford. The best play at a new Ford is at Sanderson Ford by Herf Jones by your side, by Community Tire Pros, serving Arizona since 1945, and by Talking Stick Resort, play in style. 17 to eight, the Lopes over the Vaqueros after one quarter of play. We have already had our sweet play of the game brought to you by Sweet James. That was that baseline drive by Kennedy Shorts. Yeah, I love this one right here. This is just, you know, a little Texas barbecue on that one. She just got that ball in the corner, and she just took off. And I love that one right there as the shot blocker tries to come over. She uses one extra little giddy-up dribble and got all the way to the other side of the bucket, uses that rim as a uh, protector to protect her shot, and spun it in off the glass. You already see the effect this intensity is having on this Vaqueros team as they Lopes have gone on a 9-0 run, looking to build on it. Katie Scott for three, bam! Well, that, that's that's Katie Scott. She's doing what Katie Scott does. She <laughs> bangs them inside, and then after they sag off and, and play her for the, uh, uh, the the painted area. Here we go. What is that? Seven off the glass and in. They're just so fast. Uh, uh, you got to check the passing lane twice before you try to create a pass to one of your teammates against this Lopes basketball team. Here we go, eight! Coldwell off the window. Yeah, it's just 94 feet of pressure. Uh, uh, timeout. Coach, yeah, Coach Lord needs a timeout after uh, watching those back-to-back -back turnovers. Let's see, four steals, two deflections, and two shot clock violations. It's all GCU over the Vaqueros.
welcome back right now. GCU on top of the Vaqueros 24-8. These two teams will face off once again tomorrow, as you see in our USAA athletic calendar. Then women's soccer in action tomorrow against NAU as well here at GCU. And women's volleyball back at it on Monday and Tuesday against Dixie State. And men's golf will travel to the Orange County Classic on Monday and Tuesday. And coming up here on Fox 10 Extra today at halftime, I'll check in with Coach Miller to see how she feels her team has responded here in these first two quarters. Plus, we'll also get to know some of these women's basketball players a little bit more. That's all coming up on our Lopes Halftime Show. Look forward to that. Oh, Bershears having some problems peeling away. Relentless. Oh, stepping out, Tiffany McGarity. Yeah, just that pressure. I yeah. mean, you, you're just forcing everybody to play a little further out, a little faster than they want to, and all of a sudden that court, which seems like it should be big, starts to shrink. There's no angles for player movement or ball movement. Uh, they're just swarming right now. Katie Scott for three, short. Graham picked up the rebound. The Carrolls launched the three and drain it. Well, they needed that hope. I mean, they hadn't scored about six minutes enough of uh, playing time. It felt like about 20 minutes of actual real time and get that nice pass over to the left wing and knock in the three. And Garrity with it off the window and in. Oh, good interior passing right there down low. Lopes right now, outside of one Smith three-point shot. It seemed like they find the bucket every time that go down the floor. Tierra Brown with that bucket. Back and forth. Early second quarter. Brown. Graham drives. Williams. Working inside up over Sanchez into Katie Scott's hands. Oh, ball pressure oh, doing wonders. Careful. Aaron pass. Rare unforced it. error by the Lopes. You haven't really? seen them do too many unforced errors. They're not. <laughs> they're human. Yeah, they're, they're, they, 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 they do make mistakes, but you don't really see them make the unforced mistakes. They're so well coached. Also, for the Lopes, number two, Kennedy Shorts. Kennedy Shorts in. Carla Balagay in for the GCU. Ben Vieiras as well. Harris guarding Williams near side Graham Brashears drives knocked out and Schwartz got that from behind she was beat off the dribble drive but stayed with the play Laura Pierre looked to drive but stopped there under the bucket by Jones she used to her left hand drives now she's had a couple swatted away at the basket long distance and good for three. Well, a couple three-point shots cut to that uh, deficit. Down only 12 now. The Shears with the bucket. That's heavy rebound. Vaqueros, Williams. Arizona on her. Williams looked inside, but pushed out by Piero. It's going for Soy Sal. The for the Vigueros, number 24, well, just a big picture moment thing here. You see the pressure on both Jackson. ends of the floor, the tempo which the Lopes want to play, plus the defensive pressure they uh, apply. You know that that will take a tremendous toll on this Vigueros team come the fourth quarter that are not used to seeing this kind of smoke in which the Lady Lopes are giving them here in this first, first half of action. Williams looking to go up over the top, but great defense by Vieiras. Really is. They're so good at coming off the weak side and getting deflections, getting steals, and not allowing anything easy. Good switching, good communication. Another switch, two more switches, and it took them all, all of five seconds to get that ball inbound. Graham looking to drive. Eight on the shot clock, throws it up. Vieiras called. Well, Graham has repeatedly driven here in this first half. I think the Lopes are going to have to stunt like they're closing down on her outside shot. Play her for the drive until she can prove she can make a couple from out there behind the arc. 
Amara Graham stands here. Graham came in 85% at the line. Amara Miller, I tell you, she can really shuttles her players in and out. Katie Scott was only out for a couple trips up and down the floor. Just get her right back in and get shorts out. And Keep her, keeping her players fresh here in this first half so they can continue to play this up-tempo style. Jackson to Scott. Vieras from the corner. Ba Bam! Nice pass by Scott. Good corner with this that time. And wonderful job getting to that far corner. Makes it real hard on the defense to close all the way out to that corner of the court there and get a little bit longer to size that ball up. Jones with a nice feed underneath. It's a real trickle, tricky deep dribbling too between the defense created that play who dropped Katie Scott towards her and then fed her teammate with a nice little bounce back. So he's Sal with the bucket. Jackson to Scott. In the corner, Vieras. Off the mark. Loose ball, picked up by the Lopes, stopping and popping, that's off the mark. Pushed out of bounds. And the Vaqueros. Graham. Carried it. Wow. Yeah. I mean, just because a defender comes over and, and, and applies the trap, 60 feet from the basket it causes the turnover. I, I, this is an impressive style to watch. I, <laughs> I've never seen a team every every possession go into a full court press. I mean, this is this is fun to watch. Baldwell, Jackson, to Scott, kick back to Caldwell in the corner. Vieras for three. No, loose ball. Vaqueros. Yeah, Vieros likes those corner threes. She knocked that first one down. She's come back and shot a couple more, but that's what this Coach Miller wants. She wants this team, if they got a good look, they should feel free to take it. For every three-point shot that GCU makes, Copper State Credit Union will make a donation to the Students Inspiring Student Scholarship. For more information, please go to giving.gcu.edu. Under five and a half to go until halftime. Miller to chat with Kay Longworth. Malagay call. Interesting call off ball. I mean, really wanted to deny that that wing pass, and there was some contact. Jones, right hand, rings around. Loose ball, picked up by Williams. Kick back out to Jones. Stepping back. Hands it to Graham. She looks to drive. Right hand. No look. Threw it up there. Balagay. Ooh, careful. That finds Piera. Just had that rare turnover. Jackson. Deja. Ooh, caught her toe on the court. Vieros to Scott. Ten on the shot clock. Open look. Oh, travel. Yeah, just a little hop before she got that ball on the floor. A couple turnovers here in the second quarter for the Lopes. As uh, kind of taking a little bit of the rhythm and the momentum out of their offense. They're getting some good looks on those three-point shots, but I liked it better when they were going inside. Also for the Lopes, number 20. Under four and a half to go. Tiana Brown. In for Jackson. Williams. A chance for the Vaqueros to cut that deficit to single digits on this trip down the floor. Martino looking to move on Scott. Foul called on Katie. Yeah, that's going to be her second. Something to watch. This is a big part of uh, what this Lopes team wants to do. Need her on the floor. Jessica Martino, two. Martino, the junior from Manhattan.
try to anticipate huh? It's both. Back in the ball game with the below number 24, Tierra Brown. Well, you're looking at a big deficit. You know there's no 10-point play, so you got to keep chipping away. That's what the Vaqueros have been able to do here in this second quarter after the Lopes went crazy to start the quarter. The Vaqueros have just been chipping away. Now they got this thing down to nine, and that's manageable. They keep it at yep. nine or less going to the locker, and they'll feel a little bit better about themselves. Tierra off the mark. Vaqueros, Graham brings it up. Cuts to the near side. Down low underneath, wide open for the Vaqueros. And they are chipping away. Graham with great court vision. She's found a number of her teammates just by showing the ball, with pump fake, like she's going to shoot and then passes it or drives it and passes off the dribble drive. Martino with the bucket. Approaching three and a half to go until the half. The lead is dwindled to seven. In the corner, Vieiras, long distance. Good! Tierra Brown! Well, I was saying they needed to go inside. He told TB, said, hey, put this in your, your mouth hole, Scott Williams. I'm going <laughs> to knock this thing out from the outside. Uh, Three-point shot. Williams, a little bit of room. Throws it up, draws the foul. Tell you what, these lopes, they do in the half court pass this ball extremely well. You know they spend a lot of time uh, in the lab working on their ball handling and passing and distribution, their spacing. And you got three players all spread out 15 feet apart. Hard for two defenders to guard three players. They work that ball around nicely and get the open lady for the open jump shot. Tavia Rowell in for the lopes. Williams connects. Two of three now at the line. For the sophomore, Bartlesville, Oklahoma. We're gonna have a lane violation here. One of the UTRGV players got a fell in the lane before the free throw went up. That's a turnover. Well, not it's technically a turnover, it's a violation. That coaches love that. <laughs> Weighted vest after practice. <laughs> Goldwell. Three minutes to go until the half. Tiana. Inside to Tierra. Fought some room and drops it in. That really was. Just stabbed her foot in the ground like she was going to go baseline. Got the defense off balance. It comes back to the middle right in front of the rim. Just flips it over. So you get three point shot. Then you come back with the. Easy bucket inside, and all of a sudden, five-point swing right there. Almost knocked away. Graham, eight on the shot clock. They haven't been able to set up anything. Picked off! Tiana Brown. Looking to drive, throws it up. Tiana Foul, Brown. Yeah. Martino. This Lopes team, not so much picked off Barry, she actually just had that ball taken from her. One of the few times Graham has given up the ball, and she's their primary ball handler, and the Lopes are just swarming her. I mean, look all over her, and they just come off of the weak, out of the corner there and just take that candy and head down the other way with it and get the contact at the basket. Now an opportunity to go to the line and make your free throws. It's good team defense. And you got one player all over ball hawking. You, you think you got by one, and here comes her sister over here to shut you down and take the ball from you. Double B's are shutting him down here. 12 turnovers, 12 points. Back in the ball game, the Lopes, number five, Laura Vieira. Vieira. With the Vieira, number 21, Tiffany Checks Vieira. back in. Well. It was the final two to three minutes of that first quarter. Lopes went on a little run. It seems to be their, their um, modus operandi here as they're trying to do it once again and close out another quarter and to close out the half well. Haley Jones. My goodness. Loose ball again. Yeah, loose ball foul. Trying to dive for that basketball, but she ended up on the on top of one of the Vaqueros. Oh, <laughs> she got a little three, smile like, hey, Molly Miller does not mind that one bit. <laughs> she said, I like my players to be aggressive. Go get that rock. 
Haley Jones this year. Remember that uh, movie, Water Boy? They told Bobby Boucher, give yeah. the ball, give the ball, Bobby. <laughs> that's that's <laughs> what kind of coach really reminds me of what he coach on the sideline. Go take that ball from him. Give me that ball back. Bobby. <laughs> they are out there just scrapping, fighting, clawing for every time the Carroll's out of possession. They want that ball back. Off the mark. Approaching two minutes to go. Opening half. Piera. Was that Adam, Adam Sandler? Yep. Oh, Kennedy Short's called. Yeah, legal screen that time. Just didn't get set. Clipped the defender. Another turnover in the second quarter here for the Lopes. They would have had, I mean, it wasn't for all these, all these turnovers. They would have had 45 or 50 points this quarter. I mean, this, this half. I mentioned this team's in 33rd in the nation in scoring. I mean, you can see why, right, Barry? I mean, just all yep. this up-tempo pressure, all these turnovers that create these layup opportunities. Playing this way, you can pile up some points. Molly Miller knows all about that. Bershears lost the ball. Kicked up. Drop behind the back, oh, no, baby! She did. No, Woo! she didn't. Roll. Oh, that's pretty special right there. It's one thing to try that move in practice. It's another thing to pull it off in the game. <laughs> I was sitting here thinking, why didn't she give it back? Why is she not giving it back to the trailer? But she had a little something in store. Puts a little hot sauce on this one here. Put her head down. Put that thing behind her. Her backside right. Perfect strike to the trailing. TB who lays it in off the glass. That was special. Put that one on the Sports Center highlight. Deanna Brown from Spadaway, Washington takes the feed. She loves it. Look at a big smile on her face. You see me? You see me, Katie? <laughs> Do it behind my back. <laughs> Tavia Ryle from Langley, BC. The uh, Pacific Northwest heard from. Thirty-eight, twenty-four, GCU over the Vaqueros. Kennedy Shorts, near side. Tiana Brown leaves for Piero, top of the key, kick back out. Stepping back is Brown driving left hand, draws the foul. Just so good at getting in that painted area, whether it be off of just a straight post up, post moves, using her footwork down low, or putting the ball on the floor, getting inside, getting that contact, just keeping those trips to the free throw line going. Buju Soy Sal picks up her first. Yeah, it's only the second team foul uh, of the quarter by the Vaqueros. It just seems like the Lopes continue marching that free throw line, getting those free throws to go. Brown. Perfect. Back in the ball games for the Lopes. Oh, yeah, it did not. And uh, before you could blink, they got it, you know, Lopes ran it back up to 16, and they did it without their best player on the floor. Katie Scott went out with their second foul, and Lopes didn't miss a beat. Deanna Brown with 10 points for GCU. Graham, I by Piero. Here we go again. Piera takes her pocket. Oh, Aaron pass. Maybe a little, trying for a little too much of a home run there. Had the ball, probably could have set one up that time, but keep the pressure on him. I mean, number third, third in the whack and, and steals. Almost got to try to get another one there. Swarming Graham. Near side. Looking to drive, kick back out underneath. Soy Sal off the mark. The Carroll's on the run, out of bounds. Lopes will inbound. Uh, uh, Graham, is, if you can get a shot at Graham, she is completely out of gas. The Lopes have been just dogging her uh, the whole time. And one player, or either 94 feet, or two players in the half court. She, half won't come fast enough for her. I mean, but that's what this Lopes team does. I mean, imagine her being this tired here to finish the second quarter. How tired is she going to be to start the fourth? Five for their leading scorer, Graham, here in the waning moments of the first half. 15 seconds remain. Piera 
surveying the scene. Tevi Rao drives, floater up top, good! They're gonna have to heave it up. They're gonna let it expire. 42 to 24 is the halftime score. GCU in control all over the Vaqueros with 14 first half turnovers. Yeah, they had a nine point lead with about three minutes to go and they doubled that to take it to the locker room up at 18 points. Coach Molly Miller's got to be happy with her team's performance here in the first half. Nona Lopes with a commanding lead here at the half. And we will have Coach Miller join Kate Longworth. All right, well, thank you, Coach. And uh, I know you take pride in fast-paced basketball games. How was your team able to go out there and set the tempo from the get-go today? You know, we set it with our defense always. Defense for us is priority number one, and I thought we put pressure on them and set the tone early. So our offense is created and generated from our defense, so it was good to see us come out of the get gate, really pressure the ball, and make some things happen on that end. And you lead the, t the nation when it comes to opponents forcing those turnovers, and I know we're excited to see that played out today. So far, you guys have uh, forced 13, good for 14 points for the Lopes. Why is this such a key factor for your team to achieve those victories, and how are you guys doing this so effectively? Well, I think if we wear them out defensively, we can get some of those steals. And I call them a pick six, you know, fitting since the Super Bowl is upon us. But we want to get the, in those passing lanes, grab a steal, and go score quickly. You know, our half-court offense is something we don't want to run. We don't want to have to run half-court offense if we can generate pressure and points off our turnovers. All right, thank you so much, Coach. It's been a fun first two quarters. We wish you the best in the final two. Thank you. All right, well, she calls it the pick six. Well, that's very fitting because I've been calling this the big game. Who needs a Sunday? When your Saturday is super here at GCU Arena, right now, the Slopes with the lead over the Vaqueros, 42-24. It's only been two quarters. We're going to keep this party going with the Lopes Halftime Show right after this. When the going got tough, many people bunkered down. Dealerships turn to mundane sales online with impersonal deliveries, not Sanderson Ford. We chose to work even harder and provide more personalized service and value in our showroom. Or you can shop from home, buy from home, and we'll deliver. We've been delivering vehicles to our customers for over 65 years. Call Luis Gonzalez. Hey David, I'm just pulling in with your new truck. Wow, I'm blown away. Thanks for the personalized service. It's time to get away. It's time to escape. It's a new day to play. Your retreat awaits at Talking Stick Resort. Indulge your appetite for excitement with our thrilling table games, our electrifying slots, our outstanding restaurants, and our exceptional accommodations. It's all waiting for you. It's a new day to play at Talking Stick Resort. Play in style. Joel Embiid is unhappy. Like, really unhappy. Because the internet keeps using not-so-amazing GIFs to react to his amazing highlights. Mountain Dew presents the Joel Embiid Deserves Better Reactions GIF Collection. Now I'm so happy. with seven points as the Lopes take a commanding 42-24 lead over the Vaqueros here in the first two quarters of action. Coming at you live here on Fox 10 Extra, Kate Longworth bringing you the Lopes halftime show. And Coach Molly Miller has called Laura Piera the kind of quarterback of this team. She's like the mouthpiece of the coach on the court, and then she's the motor for these players. Coach Miller was a point guard herself in college, and she said she just loves coaching LP because it's like coaching herself. And so now we take time to get to know the junior point guard just a little bit more as Lopes insider Paul Coro got the backstory. They swing it around the horn left side for Pieta. Pieta goes away from the Balagay screen, goes all the way in, puts it up off the jumper. It's a two point game. Here is Miles, poked away, saved in the corner.
Hi, we're here with Laura Pierre of the GCU women's basketball team right on the spot where she's usually running point, bringing up the ball. And in this year's system, she's really shined for the Lopes because this defensive pressure system fits the kind of ball you love to do, right? Yes. What do you like about uh, playing that full court intensity? I like, I'm an aggressive player, so I like the aggressiveness, all like full court. And I love stealing the ball, that's my game. Yeah, you and Taylor Caldwell are one-two in the whack for steals. What's your, your favorite kind of steal? Do you like picking in the passing lanes or do you like sneaking up on somebody? I, yeah, I like the passing lanes because it gives me free lay, like easy layups, but I like be on the ball all the time, like high pressure and just steal the ball. Now, three years ago, you made the decision to come from Barcelona, Spain, yes. to here with your friend Carla Balague. <laughs> what, why, why did you guys decide that uh, GCU would be the right type of university to fit you? This program was a new program, and I was like so excited to like try to make history, like try to make to win the WAG, the first, the first team in GCU win the WAG. So I, I was like, I'm, I'm, I guess I'm coming here. And what's basketball like growing up in Barcelona? You've been part of the, the national teams there and got to do a lot of things uh, throughout Europe and, and in the world championships. Yeah, um, it's different. Europe basketball is more like technique, like run plays all the time. And I feel like American basketball is just uh, more contact, more like fast pace, um, like score quickly and all that. And it took me a little bit to like, I understand the game, but yeah, now I think I do. What do you think you guys are building in a program here uh, because you guys have been so successful in this start already? Of course, we're building a family. I feel like we are a family. We support each other and we're really close. And Ankara, we just like play basketball, be aggressive and try to succeed every game. How do you like just uh, going to school here and being in Phoenix, such a drastic change from home. Yeah, it's a little bit hot, to be honest, but it's good. I like it. I like the people here. They're really nice. And you're playing for a former point guard. How, how nice is that for a point guard to have a coach who played your position? Really nice. She helped me a lot. She gave me like some tips, and I think that's like a good point for me. Well, thanks for joining us, LP. Good luck the rest of the season. Thank you. Well, thanks to LP, the Lopes lead the nation when it comes uh, to the opponent's turnovers and the turnover margin today. More of the same, 13 turnovers they have for us for 14 points. And it's showing off in that score right now. The Lopes, 42, Vaqueros, 24. We'll keep breaking down the halftime. Barry and Scott up next. We'll be right back. When the going got tough, many people bunkered down. Dealerships turned to mundane sales online with impersonal deliveries. Not Sanderson Ford. We chose to work even harder and provide more personalized service and value in our showroom. Or you can shop from home, buy from home, and we'll deliver. We've been delivering vehicles to our customers for over 65 years. Call Luis Gonzalez. Hey David, I'm just pulling in with your new truck. Wow, I'm blown away. Thanks for the personalized service. Grand Canyon University, a Christian university, is one of the largest and fastest growing universities in the country. GCU offers 270 dynamic academic programs with modern apartment style living, classrooms, labs, restaurants, and more. Located in beautiful Phoenix, Arizona, GCU's vibrant community and expansive campus is ranked top 20 for best college campuses in America. My university integrates the free market system with a welcoming Christian worldview perspective into its academic programs and throughout campus life. So you can put your faith into action and help transform communities. GCU campus students received over $157 million in scholarships in 2020, and many students attend GCU for less than the cost of a state university. Visit gcu.edu slash myoffer to see the scholarships you qualify for. Admissible high school seniors can schedule a free visit from anywhere in the country. Find your purpose at Grand Canyon University. Visit gcu.edu slash myoffer. Beautiful afternoon on the campus of Grand Canyon University. 42-24, the Lopes over the Vaqueros. 
Gary Vitale, Scott Williams. So glad you could join us this afternoon for some up-tempo basketball. As, uh, boy, you got to call a cop because there's some thieves here stealing some basketballs. There's 14 turnovers in that opening half by GCU. Like Molly Miller says, they are flying around out there on the floor, and it's a fun thing to watch. And this team gets after it defensively. They get in a stance. They get up and ball, apply ball pressure. They get in passing lanes. They get those steals. They're just smart, Betty, you know, heady basketball players. And they're just uh, getting up and forcing a player to step over the half court line or get in the passing lane, get and steal. Rotating in transition, causing a 24-second shot clock violation. And they've done it in a variety of different ways. And like you said, 14 steals, a number of deflections, the shot clock violations. Hey, I was a defensive player. I, I want to put on my Air Jordans and go out there and play for Coach Miller. <laughs> You're definitely getting a great shape playing for her. There's no doubt about it. Deanna Brown with three steals of her own. Picking up 10 points as we look at our first half stats brought to you by Commonwealth Insurance. 48% shooting by GCU. Those points in the paint, decisive for the Lopes. Yeah, the differential points on the, uh, off of turnovers. A lot of those, we should call them pick six types mm -hmm. of yeah. turnovers that lead to that easy dribble down and lay it in off the bucket. That's why you get the points in the paint. That's why you get the uh, point differential and points off of turnovers. And that's why you shoot 48% in that first half. Wonderful thing to watch. All right, GCU's on top, 42-24. Kate will be back with more of our halftime festivities here from Phoenix right after this. I would say to anybody considering maybe skipping graduation to spend a long time thinking about participating. I think it's a great opportunity to really take advantage of a moment that you only get once in your life. It, it's an opportunity to really experience something that highlights all the hard work that you've put in. Not very many people get to experience that in their life. It's such an honor and a privilege to be able to do that. And I think the memories that come out of that are just incredible. Herf Jones, by your side. USAA insurance for members like Kate. A former Army medic made of the flexibility to handle whatever Monday has in store and tackle four things at once. So when her car got hit, she didn't worry. She simply filed a claim on her USAA app and said, I've got this. USAA insurance has made the way Kate needs it. Easy. She can even pick her payment plan, so it's easy on her budget and her life. USAA. What you're made of, we're made for. At Tire Pros, we know your time is valuable. And spending time with family and friends is what really matters. Our customers are the core of our business. That's why we make buying tires and auto service hassle free. Our certified technicians will keep your car running smooth. So you can spend your time the way that you want. Find a convenient location near you at tireprosofarizona.com. Hassle free guarantee. Yeah, lots happening inside GCU Arena. The Lopes lead the Vaqueros right now, 42-24. Very balanced attack from the Lopes. They're shooting nearly 50% as a team with Brown leading the way. Tiana Brown leading the way with 10 points. Meanwhile, freshman sensation Katie Scott behind her with nine. And then we have Piera and Tiara Brown with seven points. On the other side, coming into the game, we knew Graham would probably be the star of the show for UTRGV, and she's proving to be so, so far, with five points in the first quarter. And we want to remind you, fans, if you're at home joining us here in Fox 10 Extra, you can still be a part of the action. Make sure you have the GCU Lopes action, or app, rather, the Lopes app on your phone or computer, and then you can try out the new mobile scratchers presented by Easy 1040. It's on that Lope Nation app, and then you get a chance to win a GCU fan pack so you can enjoy the game experience even from your living room couch, and you can also get entered for a chance to win a new 55-inch TV or an iPad from Easy 1040. So make sure you have that. We'll take a quick break, download that app, get your scratchers on uh, the left side of that app, and then when we come back, how about more action here from GCU? Let's do it. Third and fourth quarters underway. When life seems uncertain, there's one credit union that provides both dollars and cents. Copper State Credit Union. With solutions that focus on our members, you can take advantage of competitive rates, free cash back checking, and local attentive service. 
Uplifting our community is a standard we live by. That's why thousands of your Arizona neighbors rely on us. Strengthening Arizona families through financial empowerment. That's Copper State Credit Union. From reimagining the way you work to reassessing what you need, you've changed the way you do business. And now, so have we. With no annual contracts and flexible internet and voice solutions, you'll have what you need to get back to business. Rethink, reconnect, reimagine. Switch to Cox Business today. At Raising Cane's, we know quality takes time, patience, and the best ingredients, which is why every chicken finger we serve is hand-battered and cooked to order just for you. We never take shortcuts. That doesn't mean you can. Introducing an even faster and easier way to order Cane's with our new app. Find your closest restaurant, customize your meal, pay, and schedule pickup. So next time, take it easy and order with the Raising Cane's app. Raising Cane's Chicken Fingers, one love. <laughs> Chamber of Commerce Day here on the campus of Grand Canyon University in Phoenix. Lopes enjoying the day, 42-24 inside that building. Here at Grand Canyon University Arena, Tiana Brown with a very impressive first couple of quarters. Yeah, she's been everywhere. <laughs> she's gotten the steals, she's gotten uh, using her wheels in transition. They've gotten inside up for her buckets. I love that one there behind the back pass and, and lays it in but she's just been aggressive uh, and, and ball finds energy she's just been a bottle of energy out there and she's been able to put it in the basket and 10 points three for three four or four from the line couple deflections couple steals doing it all bad at all oh my what's that <laughs> it's supposed to be a flamingo <laughs> Inbound, Williams. Graham averaging 16.7 points per game, held to five in the opening half. Brashears, 15.3, she has three. Yeah, and just great team defense. They really shut them down. That doesn't go for Martina. Good defense by Katie Scott, avoiding picking up her third foul early in this third quarter. All alone. Wow. Uncontested for Caldwell. Yeah, Caldwell's primarily their defensive player, but last couple ball games, she's been aggressive offensively. He's had to take it, right? Where is that? Oh, leave so me far. alone. Yeah, I mean, the largest lead of the game. Lopes up 21. I mean, that happened fast. Graham, foul on Piero. Foul ball down the left side of the five. Tell you yeah. what, Graham's going to need an ice bath after this game. They are making her play in a crowd. Every time down the floor she gets a ball, she's getting bumped and banged and pushed and shoved. Inbound to Bruce Shears. Scott cuts off the lane. Uh-oh, that's what we were afraid yeah. of. They oh, went no. inside. I mean, not that it's really mattered. It's big runs come with Katie Scott pretty much strapped to the pine over there. Maybe it'll just save some energy for the game tomorrow afternoon, but that's going to be her third foul. She cannot afford to get fourth here in this third quarter. I say that. I led, I led the ACC yeah, in, in, in fouls. <laughs> they had the all-time all -time record holder. I'm like, well, if somebody should know about fouling, it's you. You know, <laughs> I was watching some of these old games. I was out there. I was a hack machine. And every time I fouled, I looked at the referee like he blew the call. <laughs> At least I was consistent. <laughs> uh, foul him in, blow, uh, blame the referee for the Would bad get whistle. Well, that That's was, where you want Katie Scott, right? Yeah, good punch inside. She establishes a position right there uh, below the letters, and uh, that's the torture chamber. Uh, there's not a player in the country can stop her from putting the ball in the bucket or fouling her when she gets the ball down low like that. You know, she shoots 73%. I think I might have said 76. I gave her a couple extra percentage points earlier uh, in the afternoon. But look where she stands where she shoots those free throws. She's a, she's a good foot back from behind the line. Interesting uh, technique. Yeah. Doesn't matter, man. 
that the back of rim and down, huh? That is, I, I don't see that a lot. Uh, most players like to you know, get up right, right up to the toe that line. She's a good you know, foot to 16 inches behind. Look at this full court pressure. Get in, might get a violation here. There you go. There's nobody wow. to pass the ball into. Wow. Uh, well, that's that's great defense by the Lopes, and then maybe a little inexperience, I think, by the orange shirts there, or the coaching staff not getting a timeout before that uh, five second violation occurred. You can take a timeout there and reset. Inbound. Sierra Brown. Spin move. Lost it. Got it back. Bounce pass underneath. Jackson peeled away. Good cut, but good help side defense to stop the easy layup. Caldwell takes it from Piera. Back to Piera. Jackson looking for Caldwell. Finds Piera. Piera drives. Six. Little floater. Does it go? Knocked out by Tierra Brown. Yeah, LP has had three opportunities now around the rim. She got a couple blocked, but she's been kicking herself tonight back in the dormitory for missing that easy little one right in front of the rim. Tino. Easy for Williams. Just underway. Third quarter. Do they still put these kids in dormitories or they like got apartments off campus somewhere? They're like now. residence halls here. Oh, I mean, tish, tish. Have you seen the residence halls here? I bet. Probably better than oh some of the apartments I lived in. Hey, Joe. A lot of them have their own rooms. Oh, oh. Couldn't put that home, but a sweet feed down low in the post. Pierre, baseline, takes it back, floater, doesn't go. Laura Pierre just trying to find her rhythm here. Unable to hit it. Pierre Brown slow to get up off the court. Up over the top, knocked out of bounds by Kennedy Shorts. Yeah, Shorts did a nice job there, really hustling. Just got her fingertips on there and have to make the Vaqueros take it baseline out of bounds. But you're right about uh, Piera, she, she's being aggressive tonight, whether it's the drives to the basket or looking for outside shot. She's trying to put that thing in the hole. So it's amazing. You have a just picked off. one off of her season high at 18 points and she had 17 last time out. She's trying to get 17 oh, again. Oh, did you see that? Talk about a pick thing now. She picks it off again. Wow. Doing her dog. Jay Jackson. Oh, oh, she turns it. it over. That was impressive enough. Graham underneath. The shears. Can't well, you like fast and furious action. Here it is. <laughs> He's get to steal it one end, take it down here. She gets knocked to the ground, and I think the inbounder just forgets about her. And she's getting back up, almost hit her in the mouth with the pass. She got another step. <laughs> Coach Miller over there putting some, some body English <laughs> on, the, on the players out there trying to help any best way she can. Greg's down as well. Loving that energy. Garrity. Looking to turn that corner. Again, Kennedy shorts. Yeah. I, no. A number of deflections and block shots. Uh, just flying around again. Defensively, just causing havoc. Nothing easy around the basket right now for the gals in orange. Picked out Graham. Looking for their, her first point. I think there was a block. It probably could have been a couple players down there that could have gotten that uh, foul call, but nice job really attacking that basket. Brashears just was not going to be denied and settling for the outside shot that time. Got some contact, and that's what you need when a team is struggling to score the ball. You got to get somebody that can get themselves to the free throw line and get a freebie. Pierre Brown, her second personal foul. Shears at the line. Sophomore from Fort Smith, Arkansas. Boy, a couple players went down like a sack of bricks. It both seemed to be okay fighting down there for that position in case that ball could have come off the rim for that rebound and went down hard on the hard wood. Katie Scott back in for Kennedy Shorts. Shorts has some good minutes in that rotation.
Scott to Piera. I don't know if you caught the halftime interview with Paul Cora or Piera. That was really good. She's a well spoken uh, young lady. Yes. Big bucket! Jackson! Well, Jackson's come to play here in the second half. They got the steal, the layup, and then look at <laughs> here. Three point shot. Another deflection, carried that out of bounds. <laughs> you talk about players flying around. I mean, that's. Look what they do. They face guard out of bounds, not allowing the easy inbound pass. They oh! get another steal. This time, Tierra Brown back out. Off the mark. Graham brings it up for the Vaqueros. Jones in the corner. Good bucket to buy Tiffany McGarity. It really was. It was good offense. Out of that air ball, they really pushed that ball down the floor, made the extra pass, and found the shooter up behind the three-point line. Tierra Brown lost it. Graham. Stops, pops, good. They yeah, really got Kate Scott back on her heels, not wanting to pick up her fourth foul against Graham, who's such a tricky ball handler, did the right thing, gave up the easy shot. The 20 point lead, you don't want to get your fourth foul. Piera, hide by Graham. Katie Scott. Brown back to Piera. Four, three, looking to feed. Jackson, turn around, got to get a shot off. Throws it up off the mark. That's the only offensive yep, possession right. I can remember where they were really stagnant. Not, a lot, not much player movement or ball movement. Graham is fouled by Jackson. I'll go back to this one right here. This good Katie Scott drive. She just whips it right out to Jackson from behind the arc. And, you got to love the Jackson spotting up behind the arc, but I also got to love the fact that Katie Scott is always looking to try to get her teammates involved in the offense. I like the way they point to the uh, the passer who gave them the assist. That's something that uh, Coach Smith started back in the 70s at North Carolina. Speaking of North Carolina, it's a huge rivalry game between Carolina and Duke today, uh, Barry, at 5 o'clock. And you know who I'm going to be pulling for. Chapel Hill. That's right. You know, I was reading a stat this this uh, morning. It said since 76, there's been 108 games played between Duke and Carolina. And the series is tied 54-54, and only about 13 points separate the two. Something's got to give. Look at Katie Scott, though. She's Look not the giving anything. It all the way to the She's home. taking everything that she wants out there on the floor right now. Williams. Make it up for some of that lost time on the bench in the first half. Carroll, baseline. Way out. Almost a blind pass out there. Williams going to move on Kennedy Shorts. Heels back out. Long distance. Jones. Good. Well, that three point shot's really saving their bacon here in this third quarter. Look at the long push up the floor. Careful. Jackson keeps it in. Finds a seam in the corner. Foul. 429 on the clock. 54 35. The Lopes have been in control from the opening tip. A lot of players contributing. Nana Jackson uh, coming up big in this one. Also, uh, Taylor Caldwell, the Team's veteran, coming back from that knee injury. Team's best defender. He got that big brace on a leg, but it was nothing to slow her down one bit. She gets after it, uh, getting into the pass lane, getting steals, getting turnovers. Crazy, creating easy opportunities for herself and for her teammates. I always love the defensive players because I was one myself. I love that closing out in the corner, getting that block shot, and you come back in, you smash the dribbler and, and get another turnover. And then this is this is my favorite one right here because she just decides, okay, you're not going to guard me. Right. I'll, I'll make you pay. Right. Disrespect me like that. Love the smile. Little Lopes came in three and one in the Western Athletic Conference. The Caros, their first conference game is today. The California Baptist. Well, they went again. Yeah, they, they, they won another one. They were 14 and 0 to start the morning. Now 15 and 0, 7 and 0 in the West. Wow, on fire. Grand Canyon right behind them there, three and one. The battle, Seattle U, four and two in the conference. We get to do a game against Seattle U. You told me, yep, right? Yep. Later Looking forward on to that. Month. That'll be fun. I like watching these gals play. Really Pajama day here. Just roll right out of their residence hall. I'm not 
sure if that's as flattering as uh, Thunder would like. Not sleepwear, but it looks comfortable. Is that like supposed to be a nightgown? Uh, 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 I guess so. Kate, help us in. Well, it's not just uh, Thunder having fun in the crowd. Coach Miller, we know she was incredible at Drury. She led up to a 32-0 record. She started off here at GCU with a new scoring record with 93 points in the once opening game. And there you just saw her own personal cheering squad. Her mom's at the game, her husband Crosby, and her two young kids, I mean her husband rather, and then her two young kids, Crosby and Asai. And, uh, Fun for her family to be able to join in on it all too, because as she said, she's trying to create fun not only on the court but obviously in the stands too. Yeah, I've seen I've seen video. She's posted video of her youngest daughter there snowboard, which <laughs> is yeah, getting after shredding the slopes. Short, oh, two and a half hour drive north. So the Caros put it in off the glass. I love this state. Jump on that. I-17 and hit the slopes and head on back down to the valley. Yeah. Get out of the snow. Go for an afternoon or evening hike in the mountains. Yep. Scott doesn't go. Big rebound picked up by the Vaqueros. Elisevich. Finds its way to Jenna Williams. Looks to her coach. Coach Lloyd. It's his third season. Travel. Uh, I was just going to say that the Vaqueros, I mean, they were down 24 points. They're starting to chip away. It's still a 17-point disadvantage. But like I said, there is no 10-point play in basketball. If you want to not maybe not get back and win this game, but definitely set a tone and give yourself a little momentum going into the game tomorrow morning, you got to start playing and getting a rhythm and understanding how this Lopes team attacks you defensively so your offense might click a little bit better the next time you play. 20 turnovers for the Vaqueros. That's not going to get it done. We still got three minutes to go in the third quarter. Called well. But that's what this Lopes team does. I mean, there's no real shame. I mean, Lopes averaged 26, uh, create 26 turnovers a, a game. Vieira puts it up. Good! Now, I had an opportunity to watch the Lopes play a couple times, and I've jinxed them both times. Both games I've come to, they lost. Wow, nice three out of the corner there. But I sat with Coach, uh, excuse me, Coach President Mueller, who knows basketball. You know that, Barry. What we sat up there, we watched yeah. the, we watched these gals play and really watched the, Laura Pierre struggle shooting that ball from the outside. She's really put some time in the lab over the last week to 10 days and working on her outside stroke. Caldwell off the mark. Pierre saw it, read it, picked it up. Good work by Pierre. Jordan Lewis hit the three for the Vaqueros. Off the glass. Doesn't drop for Katie Scott. Loose ball underneath. Oh, that ends up off of Katie's right hand. One more time. It's just a nice little, you know, it's good spacing. It's just, just this little drive brings Pierre's gal off of her. And she's trying to recover. Just no hesitation. She's got a confident looking shot right now. The Spaniard. Barcelona. You ever been to Barcelona, Barry? Oh, it's beautiful, though. Yeah, I have. It's a beautiful city. I went down. They got this street down there. It's called. I think it's called La Wamba. If I'm saying that right. It's just cafes and diners and shops and tree-lined streets on both sides. Outdoor dining. Beautiful. Is it like Collins Avenue, Miami Beach, kind of right on the beach. Yeah, lots of restaurants. Yeah, but I, I think it's even nicer than that. I, I think it's a little more upscale. Collins can get a little crazy. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, Carla Balagay also from Barcelona, and Kate Longworth has more on Barcelona. Right, Kate? Yeah, and you guys, I actually, uh, much like some of the players here on our team, uh, doing their study abroad, their schooling here from Barcelona, I did that, but the opposite. Oh. I studied with my best friend in Spain, and I agree with you, Scott. It's just beautiful. It's a lot of great architecture there, and it is kind of a fun city, and um, a lot of... Um, Things got redone for it when they hosted the Olympics, and that made it a very like appealing city for many to visit. That's right. The '92 Olympics were in Barcelona when they sent the Dream Team over there to smash everybody in basketball. That's what made Scotty Pippen. 
the 92? Yeah, I mean, he was a good player going into that Olympics, but coming out of there working with those guys, uh, Bird and uh, Magic and Barkley, he became, his, his game even elevated to another level where obviously they call him one of the 50 greatest NBA players of all time. Oh, look at that, a hoop and a harm. Tierra Brown with a hand in her face what puts it in. Brown do for you? I mean, just to, just doing a little bit of everything out here in this basketball game. You know, like that one right there. Take a smack right upside your grill and still finish the playoff. Numbers on in the evening, or excuse me, the afternoon. Nine points, four for nine from the field. Snatching five boards, couple of deflections. Rebound picked up by Balagay. I don't want to keep harping on the Vaqueros. They may be a little outclassed in this basketball game. Certainly not used to this type of a up tempo style, but right now you can see the Lopes are just out working. Oh, Caldwell with a drive off the window. Yeah, just out working them out, just out hustling. Maybe yeah. you're getting some tired legs, not used to this type of energy output. And they seem like when they go on a little run and make a run at the Lopes, the Lopes come right back at them with turnovers and inside buckets. There's a nice pass inside. Nice work down low for Soy Sal. Wonder, you know, down by 18, 20 points here. Got under a minute to play in the third. What Coach Lord's Traveling style, what his thought philosophy might be. Do I want to rest some of my starters, save them for tomorrow, or try to get a split out of this game, or do I keep putting the putting them out there to run them into the ground so they have no energy left for tomorrow afternoon's basketball game? We'll go down low to Soy Sal again, and she's fouled. Tierra Brown called. Yeah, Graham, the average, she's, she's logged 25 minutes. Williams, 25 minutes. So they got some players out there that are going to crack that 30 point plateau, a 30 minute plateau. You got to start to wonder do you want to start wrestling and see if the bench can come in and provide a, a lift and then maybe bring the starters back in? Well, Graham came in averaging 38 minutes per game. Yeah, that's a lot. <laughs> that's a lot of minutes. But I remember imagine when the Dwayne that Russell up. minutes were going to get up there. Yeah, uh, 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 but she hasn't seen this kind of heat. No, that's 38 no. minutes against yeah. this brush is going to feel a little bit of. It's going to feel like you know 45. It's going to feel like 45 or 50 minutes at the end of this one, and then you got to tack on. Do thinking about all night long having to face this again tomorrow. <laughs> it's going to be a restless night for her. <laughs> I had the restless night last night. Uh, Couldn't keep my eyes open at eight o'clock and. Couldn't, couldn't shut him at 11.30 as I woke up. I was up for about four hours in the middle of the night. Kennedy Shorts working down low. Draws the foul. The Shorts, I like that lunch pail that you like to talk about. Yeah, she brought her hard hat today, didn't she? Hard hat, lunch pail, thermos, you name it. She's doing all the dirty work. She's a dirt worker. She did on that construction ditch, you know. Probably got, a, you know, some, some gloves back in her locker. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I like, as, as a coach um, and as a teammate, you love to have players like that on, on your squad. I mean, I, I like to think of myself as kind of that guy. I didn't have a whole lot of talent, but I'll be darned if somebody was going out there and try to outwork me on the, on the floor. You might beat me with your talent from time to time on plays, but you're not going to beat me for lack of, me lack of trying. Oh, they get the, the rebound, Balagay, and then the Aaron feed back to Kennedy Shorts. The Carrolls, they're picked off. Deanna Brown. Floater at the bottom. Let's go. Trying to beat that game, that game clock, shot clock action there. <laughs> Just had to, had to launch a little floater from about 20 feet. Didn't get it down, but boy, Lopes looking good here in this one. 61-43, all GCU this afternoon in Phoenix. How does a chicken sandwich become a Whataburger spicy chicken sandwich? Is it by slathering it in a fiery sauce or adding some crazy hot toppings? Nah. If the chicken in the chicken sandwich wants to be spicy, it has to come from the inside. By marinating it in spices, frying it up, then cooling it off with fresh veggies. All on a new brioche bun. Good thing flavor can come from within. Good thing there's the new limited time spicy chicken sandwich at Whataburger. When the going got tough, many people bunkered down. 
dealerships turn to mundane sales online with impersonal deliveries, not Sanderson Ford. We chose to work even harder and provide more personalized service and value in our showroom. Or you can shop from home, buy from home, and we'll deliver. We've been delivering vehicles to our customers for over 65 years. Call Luis Gonzalez. Hey David, I'm just pulling in with your new truck. Wow, I'm blown away. Thanks for the personalized service. GCU Basketball is brought to you in part by Sanderson Ford. The best play at a new Ford is at Sanderson Ford. By Herf Jones, by your side. By Community Tire Pros, serving Arizona since 1945. And by Talking Stick Resort, play in style. Barry Butel, Scott Williams, Kate Longworth, back at GCU Arena on the campus of Grand Canyon University in the heart of Phoenix. And the Lopes lead it 61-43. First of two GCU women's basketball games will be broadcasting later on, as Scott mentioned earlier. We'll have the Seattle Redhawks here the day after we bring you GCU baseball against Oregon State. Andy Stankiewicz and the GCU baseball team excited about their roster. Excited for baseball to get started here. Yeah, spring training right around the corner. Yeah, we had a coach up in the booth uh, last time we were in the booth. Bam! Katie Scott! Oh, Katie Scott, what is that now? Two or three three-point shots for her. I think that's three three-point shots for Katie Scott from out there behind the arc. <laughs> Goes just four for four from the line, three of six from behind the arc. Excuse me, two, two for five from behind the arc. Uh, and five of ten overall. You can see why <laughs> she continually just keeps Put pressure on these teams defensively. Martino, charge. Go back to this one more time. It's a little set play. Just you drive down right towards my defender, and I'm going to pop back behind the three-point line, and she's going to get lost in the wash and give me a good opportunity to knock it down. Look at a big smile on that gal's face. Yeah, that's just when you worked on a play in practice. And then it, so many times and drilled it, and then all of a sudden you come out here and you perform it in the game. To uh, perfection, the execution, uh, this makes everybody happy. Oh, a nice little step there. Doesn't go, though, for Tierra Brown. Jenna Williams for the Vaqueros. Oh, Piera. Picked off. Leaves for Caldwell. I was just saying to say, Jenna Williams is being so cautious with the basketball. And they see him turn it over and let's get another two points off the turnover. Tierra Brown. Eleven for Tierra. Williams in the corner. Long distance shot brings out for Jones. Eight and a half to go. Caldwell moves left. Back to Scott. Dribble. Underhand off the glass. Yes. I was just going to say, why doesn't Katie just shoot that three-point shot? She's got such a nice three-point shot, but you wouldn't think she's as quick a first step as she would have for a gal of her height. But she just blows by the defense, gets all the way to the rock, and lays that in. Well, the Lopes came in ranked number one in the country for opponents and turnovers, turnover margin. And they're continuing that theme here today. Big game tomorrow, apparently. Here are the predictions. Tampa Bay not getting so much love from a lot of people from the great state of Missouri and Kansas. That being Molly Miller, Katie Scott. I, I like that. I like the Kansas City Chiefs in that game. I started to wear my Patrick Mahomes wig for this broadcast. I thought that might be a little over the top. Really? So, uh, but I, I'm, I'm, I'm going with the Patrick Mahomes. Okay, what do you, what? Well, you guys, What's I love your take that. on this? I liked Todd I think she played it this hard. She wasn't sure she really, you know, who she was rooting for. But she told us Tampa Bay because, well, Coach Miller and Rye like KC. So I think she's a pretty smart lady right there, going with uh, who Coach is cheering for. Smart. Meanwhile, I don't know. I mean, Tom Brady, I guess it's impressive he can do it with another team. But uh, I don't know. I think I want somebody new, which is funny because Mahomes already did this. But young guy coming up in the NFL. It'll be fun to see him make a performance. And the Chiefs got some roadblocks, some guys out. So we'll see how that plays out. Yeah, they keep thinking about the, uh, the offensive tackle. Fisher is out for the uh, the Chiefs. So they feel like 
they could put some pressure on Mahomes, but we'll see. I mean, it doesn't take them long to get it into the hands of Tyreek Hill. And all you see is this vapor trail. And that about dude two seconds fast. later, they're up six zip. Yeah, there's fast and then there's Tyreek Hill. I mean, that, that guy's got a different gear whatsoever. It's going to be a fun game to watch. I, I hope it's as good as last year's Super Bowl between um, the 49ers and the Chiefs. That was a great game. If we get one like that, it'll be special. You know me, I'm just a Brady hater. You are. I, I, I refuse. I don't care what team he plays for. I refuse to cheer for him. I normally like cheering for the old guys, but not Tom Brady. He's, he's had too much, too much success. And he got a hot wife. I mean, it's like, oh, good Lord, it's, it's too much. It's, I don't know, guys. I'm in it for the commercials. I like oh, the commercials. Oh, the commercials. And I the forgot. Snack. Another pickoff, another turnover. Oh, yeah. Katie Scott. Big we'll, we'll watch a little game first. But Big I mean, I think the snacks are just as important. Yes. Uh, and I like to go with the theme. So I'm going to go KC barbecue tomorrow and some seafood, I guess, from Tampa Bay. Ah. Yeah. yeah. What is there? I mean, are they known for like crabs or something in Tampa or shrimp? What, oh. what, they, what kind of seafood they know for? Love Tampa to have Bay. a little royal grouper. Oh, is that what they got? Okay. A little snapper down there would be good. Oh, long distance from the corner for the Vaqueros. Uh -huh. Nice execution of the offense Lewis. right there, finding the open shooter on the corner. Yeah, I'm, I'm big into the commercials. I like the ones. Anyone's got a pet or a dog or something like that in it, I'm, I'm big on the Super Bowl commercials. I'll shush people in the room if they try to talk through the commercials. Wow. Yeah, must be a ton of fun. <laughs> Well, no Super Bowl parties this year, so you should be all good to go. I know, right? Three on the shot clock. Got to throw it up. Caldwell does. Off the mark. McGarity. Yeah, after Super Bowl last year, all hell broke loose around the world. That was about the last good sporting event we had, and then everything got shut down. We had Mark Satin, as Kate likes to call it. Another three-point shot. Was that Graham? Yes, it was. Yeah, I mean, she's been quiet tonight. Yeah. <laughs> Average is 17 a game. She has not. The Lopes have done a good job throwing her off her game. Under six and a half to go. Coldwell throws up the three off the glass. Rebound. Brown. Oh, I thought Tara. Just beasting him down there on that glass. I thought maybe she might have got away with a, a push in the back. But, you know, like they say, ball finds energy. And there she is once again. Oh, she wouldn't have got that yeah. clean. Ball in. Yeah. Timeout by three new Lopes players coming back on the floor as they're trying to push this. <laughs> they got a 23 point advantage. It's been, I mean, just a couple points off of their season average of 78 points a day. We're talking about the team being the 33rd leading scoring team in the nation. They've set three NC2A D1 school records this year. The last one established at 106 points per game against, was that Park? So they, they they flat out get it done. I mean, I, I like this Molly Miller squad. She gets her team ready to compete. No doubt about it. Eight of 18 from beyond the arc. And for every three-point shot that GCU makes, Copper State Credit Union will make a donation to the Students Inspiring Student Scholarship. If you'd like to receive more information about the Students Inspiring Student Scholarship, please go to giving.gcu.edu. It's a tremendous program here. I love that. Part of the uh, GCU Learning Lounge, a free tutoring service that has benefited a number of local schools right around GCU. Here in the inner city of Phoenix, receiving free tutoring service from GCU students that have raised their academic standing, not only at their respective schools, but them personally. And they, also are eligible to receive those SIS scholarships, many of them first generation in their families to attend college. That's awesome. Yep. Awesome. Yeah, you got a shot while you were waxing poetic yeah, there. Katie like Scott. A little bit. Yeah, she's doing like, I think that was Katie Perry who was on the PA. She was singing along too. And when you're up by 23 points and you've had one heck of a game, you've done everything that you've wanted to do, dominate defensively and Shooting 47% uh, offensively. You, you get to party a little bit on the bench while the game's still going on. And they just don't. They, the pedal is always pushed to the floor. Look at this defense. Yeah, Shorts spinning around the offensive player down there blocking. Got that deflection. What, what, I mean, I, we got to look at our turnover meter. Where are we at on the turnover meter? We had 20 for a while. 25. Back. 25. So. <laughs> 
again, just one off or two off of their nation leading 26.3 game. So Sal with the miss for the Vaqueros. Caldwell, shorts, drives. Little right hand, how about that? Oh, Kent, Kent to Colby, a little sidearm. The old Pittsburgh Pirate, one of my favorite players growing up as a, a child. Didn't think I I'd use that, that reference that today. That was pretty good. Yeah, that <laughs> submarine action there for sure. She stopped and then popped back, snapped it back, and then, like you said, brought it from down under and scored the bucket. Caldwell, jump ball. Jump ball. The girls have the arrow. Ten deflections for GCU. Love that Pittsburgh Pirate team. Seventy. We are family. We are family. Amy Parker, Willie, Willie Sargent. Sargent. That's right. Kid to Kobe. Had a couple other. It's a Manny smasher. Smashers, home run hitters. Bob Walk. And, and some of the best uniforms in sports history with those those hats with the black stripes around them. Man, <laughs> those are great. You didn't like those? Williams. A little round one with the rings around. Yeah, the rings around. Oh my goodness! Looks like like train conductors. <laughs> exactly. Love those. My buddy is the uh, former roommate. Is the play-by-play uh, -play voice of the Pirates. Ah, Greg Brown. Raise the Jolly Roger. Playing some pretty good baseball in a tough market. Yeah, my business partner, real uh, Wade Gaborio. That's his favorite team, the Pittsburgh Pirates, and he. Credits those uniforms as a young child, <laughs> as a young one, trying to really turn them on to the Pirates. You can forget the legendary Roberto Clemente. A lot of Pittsburgh Pirates talk right there in the last minute or two. Yeah. Sorry about that. We digress We're, in a 74 49 game, folks. I hope you'll allow us. We're having some fun up here, too. But I, look at Pierre. I mean, once again, she's going to take away something from this game today. It's going to serve her well tomorrow because. She's been able to use that strong left hand durable drive to put a lot of pressure on this Vicaro's defense. I thought we were looking at turnover 26 yeah. for a second there, Barry Ryder. Yeah. Eighth of Vicaro's basket. That ball is loose. They don't have time, right? I mean, it, the Lopes are on everything. Tiana Brown almost got it. A little floater that short. She picked it up. Kick back out. Is it this travel? I always thought if you shot an air ball and you grabbed it, that's a travel. Interesting. I don't know if somebody got a finger one. on it or they just missed it. Long distance. Short. Off the mark for Lewis. He's got a couple from beyond the arc. Foul underneath. And working hard underneath there. Getting on that offensive glass. And one thing you will say about this, this uh, Coach Lord's team is that they haven't stopped trying to compete. Uh, I think they may be outclassed, may not have been used to this up-tempo, low-style apply. They'll make some adjustments from uh, this game to, to tomorrow's game, but they, they've, they've been out there trying to hustle. They just got to figure out a way to get that ball up the floor without committing all these uh, turnovers at the mid-court, back-court area. So Sal misses the back end of that free throw. Back in the ball game for the Vaqueros, Jessica Martino. Martino checks in, 4.08 on the clock. Are you making it over to Waste Management open this week at all? Oh, no. I don't know how many people are, actually. They're the watching fans, Jesse then. Mueller, though, following Jesse Mueller first two rounds. Thought he was going to make the cut. Two under after two rounds, and the cut was three under. That's off the mark. Shears up the court, oh, lost the handle a little bit, McGarity. Long enough for the Lopes for the jump, jump ball, ball, but the Vaqueros have the arrow. On the possession, Vaqueros basketball. Or Jordan Spieth is apparently making a run there. Mm, he's a good, <laughs> good little golfer. Yeah, it's one of my favorite events that uh, Phoenix Scottsdale uh, has every year. I know obviously this year with COVID protocols, been a little bit different atmosphere, but they raise just so much money for charities. Mm -hmm. It's um, always like to try to get out there a day or two and support what they're what they're doing. The Thunderbirds do a nice job raising that cash. Oh, loose ball. The Aris unable to gather it in. Under three and a half to go. Number twelve, Carla Allegan. Allegay checks in. Kennedy shorts. 
takes a seat. Martino able to get it, but picked off, poked up, loose ball. The Carroll's. Jackson again disrupting the flow. I was say, Jackson has been everywhere tonight. Oh, look at that. I mean, with about three drive. on the shot clock. Took that one right at Jackson. I'm tired of you stopping me. Lewis. Balor gave to Jackson. Deanna Brown, but. I think I got Soy Sal pushing underneath oh, down there. And, uh, Morris. Third personal. Balagay. Vieras. Raul. Trying to feed Balagay. Hold up to Graham. Raul guarding Mara Graham. Low wire. Charge on Graham and paying the price. Yeah. Uh, Eric's going to take it one for your teammates right there as Graham had a head of steam and just came crashing down. Good job giving up your body. At least they switched the call. Oh. Another, maybe they had switched it. Looks like they switched the call. <laughs> she don't like it. <laughs> Said I took all that pain for nothing. What? Well, uh, don't see that very often where uh, another official will come over and overrule the call that was initially made, but honestly believe it was the right call as feet were set. Yeah, just kind of just sliding into position, not 100% there. I think maybe the feet were there, but the body was still moving. Upper body was still moving. Off of Balagay. Jenna Williams inbound. 2.24 to go. Ropes in control. Want to finish strong. Carry this momentum over into game two tomorrow. A little earlier start tomorrow. What a big game here. It's got later in the day. 11 o'clock start, right? Yep. I thought Graham got away with one there. Just six to shoot. It up, Aaron pass, Balagay, Jackson. A little press here by the Vaqueros. Bust through it, Tavia Rao. Finds Brown, back to Jackson. Jackson. Taking seconds off the clock, down to 10 on the shot clock. Tiana Brown, Jackson, five, four, put it up. Step back, three, good! Wow, that's the way they do it at the next level there. <laughs> James Harden and Steph Curry do it with that step back three point shot. And again, the pressure out of bounds. Yeah, just the shot clock about to expire there. And give a little pass back, create a little space with a little V dribble there, kick it back, snap it back out there behind that arc and knocked it down. 26 turnovers for GCU against the Vaqueros. It's right on their average, right? Among the nation's leaders. Yeah, the number one of the nation. 26.3. Uh, oh, got the walk that time. Won't get the Euro step on that particular play. Uh, the Lopes have committed 12 turnovers themselves, which is a real manageable number. Approaching a minute to go. Williams throws up the three. Carroll's on the rebound. Graham's going to throw up a three attempt. The train and threes. Fortunately, they're not dropping today for the Vaqueros. Coach Lord will take a look at this, break it all down with his staff, and be back at it 
against Molly Merler and these relentless Lopes who will no doubt improve to four and one in the conference and 12 and three overall. Half a minute to go. Graham brings it up in the paint. Looking for some space. Kisses off the glass and in. Well, that should do it right there. The game clock's been turned off. I'm sure the Lopes will dribble this one out. And good sportsmanship, but they had some good contributions from everybody on the floor tonight. I mean, Kiera was fantastic. Katie Scott did her thing with the team high 18 points. New season high for Tiana Brown with 13 points. Her previous high was uh, 12 points. So just a, a wonderful team effort. Did it with the defense, as Coach Miller said. And that'll make them all happy. Look at this <laughs> sprinting down to thank the, uh, the cheer squad and the Havocs for showing up tonight. Lopes win it 77 to 55. Little doubt from the opening tip as the Lopes led it all game. Yeah, they tied. It was tied 18-18, and then the Lopes went on a big spurt there to end the half. Uh, got all the momentum going into the locker room and, and brought that momentum back out in the third quarter, and the route was on after that. Yeah, it was tied at that brief moment for a minute 53. Mention the uh, WAC record now, four and one. Let's send it down to Kate Longworth. All right, thank you guys so much. And Katie coming in to today's action. Not a lot of footage on the Vaqueros, but nevertheless, the Lopes able to come out here and establish your style of basketball. What was the key to victory? I think that getting a quick start was the key, just like it was in that last game. Coach Miller told us in this past game, we had a 23-point first quarter. That's the kind of energy we need to bring every fourth quarter. So I think that we brought that. We inserted ourselves early on. And I know all season long we've been so impressed with the poise you're showing and the leadership you're even taking on with this team in a freshman role. What's been the key to your success? I think that I've had a lot of upperclassmen who have stepped in and elevated me to a higher level. Laura Pierre and Taylor Codwell, Kennedy Schwartz, I think that they've all stepped up and they've made me look better than I am at times and I just have to give them a lot of credit. I think Coach Miller does a great job of putting us all in positions to where we can succeed and it shows on the court. And it is uh, both your first season here at the Lopes along with Coach Miller's. What's it been like for you guys? You're obviously battling some adversity just with the outside world during this COVID era, but also what's it like inside the locker room, out on the court, the chemistry between your teammates and yourself? The chemistry of this team is indescribable, really. I think that we have a great bond. You know, everybody gives us along with everybody and it shows. There's no bickering. You know, we have some girls who uh, will get onto us, but it's only to make us better if we know that. And I think that's the kind of competitive nature we need to succeed. And we've elevated ourselves from that summer to now just because we have been hard on each other, but in a positive way. And I love because, uh, you know, Coach has shared with us, she wants this intensity out there. She wants that up-tempo. But besides you guys being on the go the whole time, she wants it to be fun out there. She obviously loves the game, and I think she shares that with a lot of you players and we saw today you having a little fun you got the job done on the court but in the fourth quarter sitting in the stands the music was playing we're showing some video you were dancing <laughs> in the stands a little are you having fun out there you know what was it like when you were i think singing along to maybe a little katie perry oh uh, absolutely it's so much fun here i think grand canyon does a great job of creating a winning environment and i just think that we have so much support that it's impossible not to feel that contagious energy um, it's a lot of fun to win too and it's a lot of fun whenever you're on so I think that we we're on today as a team and we were able to have some more of that energy a key for us is having that even when we're not you know playing at the top of our ability I think that's gonna take us to a higher level as a team well thank you so much Katie and no go problem. turn on the music in the locker room you and your teammates deserve <laughs> yes, it ma'am. thank you all right well uh, Katie Scott did her thing for the Lopes and it paid off as the Lopes are victorious today, 77-55, the final here at GCU Arena. We'll be right back to wrap this one up. I'm personal injury attorney James Bergener. Accidents can happen. If something happens to you or your family, call me. My firm and I will take you by the hand and guide you through everything. You see, personal injuries are just that. They're personal. You're not a number. You're more than just a name. This is your life. At my firm, each case is professionally and personally tailored to you. So if you've been injured, I've got your back. Call me now for a free consultation. 
It's time to get away. It's time to escape. It's a new day to play. Your retreat awaits at Talking Stick Resort. Indulge your appetite for excitement with our thrilling table games, our electrifying slots, our outstanding restaurants, and our exceptional accommodations. It's all waiting for you. It's a new day to play at Talking Stick Resort. Play in style. When life seems uncertain, there's one credit union that provides both dollars and cents. Copper State Credit Union. With solutions that focus on our members, you can take advantage of competitive rates, free cash back checking, and local attentive service. Uplifting our community is a standard we live by. That's why thousands of your Arizona neighbors rely on us. Strengthening Arizona families through financial empowerment. That's Copper State Credit Union. From reimagining the way you work to reassessing what you need, you've changed the way you do business. And now, so have we. With no annual contracts and flexible internet and voice solutions, you'll have what you need to get back to business. Rethink, reconnect, reimagine. Switch to Cox Business today. Once you've been to hell and back, there's not much left to fear. When the boogeyman goes to sleep at night, he checks under his bed for me. Have you ever wondered who Waldo's hiding from? Me. Not even the cougars of LA are enough to scare me. But if I get into an accident, I'm calling the boss. Sweet James. If you've been hurt, don't back down. Call Sweet James. Welcome back. Live look inside GCU Arena as we just wrapped up action here on Fox 10 Extra with the Lopes coming out on top of their whack opponent, UT Rio Grande Valley. 77-55 the final here today, and I am joined now by Coach Molly Miller. And uh, first of all, congratulations. You guys continue your strong play in conference action. But what was the key today to victory? I know coming into this one, there wasn't much footage on the Vaqueros, but nevertheless, you guys were able to come out here and outplay your opponent. Yeah, because we didn't know much about them, they played a limited number of games, we wanted to rely on us and focus on the controllables. One controllable that we have every game is our energy. I actually call the bench energy, Binergy. So we wanted to have a lot of Binergy, and we just wanted to come out and be a good teammate. Um, I thought for the most part, we were um, very, very good at cheering each other on and just using that momentum and that energy to kind of fuel our defense. And then defense obviously create our offense. Uh, we hit some shots. We needed to hit some threes. I think that monkey got off our back a little bit. So when you see that shot go in, that gives our kids a lot of confidence. I love that you touch on that energy because when I was just talking um, to one of your stars, Katie Scott, um, I had a chance to ask her about that energy and just kind of having fun. And you have mentioned that. You want this to be a fun game. You love the game. We were joking with her because in the fourth quarter she was dancing a little <laughs> on the bench. Uh, how is that important or why is that important to you that the players are showing that enthusiasm for the game and how is that carrying over onto their play? Well, I think they're comfortable, you know, they they enjoy being around each other. They enjoy playing this game that we love and I, I want them to love the game. So I want them to be loose and have fun and enjoy it and not be too uptight about things. So I love that you can see their personality shine through. Um, when you really get a glimpse of this team and their personality, they are so much fun to be around and that carries over over the basketball court and kind of generates that energy for us. I'm going to carry over from your theme at halftime when we talked about turnovers. You guys forced 26 turnovers, turn it into 27 points. And as you called it, the pick six. It's perfect for this weekend. Um, when did you want to make that a part of the Lopes game? And how has that become kind of your signature when you guys step on the court? Really, the, you keep the opponent uncomfortable and always guessing. You know, it's a unique brand of basketball, that 40 minutes of pressure, full court. Um, it's kind of in my wheelhouse. You know, when I played, I, I you can see my stature. I was kind of a little ankle biter out there. So I wasn't doing too much in terms of, you know, offensively just uh, scoring. So I, I really generated a lot of my play and my contribution from the defensive end. So I've always loved that side of the ball. I love teaching that side of the ball. I think kids 
forget about that side of the ball sometimes. And then when you're reintroduced this newfound passion for that side, they just latch on and they buy in and it's something fun to do. So I love that they're loving to play defense. And for me, it, just to see it pay off, it, it, it means everything because that means the kids are, are loving it and they're having fun and they're buying in. And obviously for us, that's something we spend a lot of time on. So you want to see it um, kind of execute on the defensive end. And I think for the most part, you know, we're still learning the system a little bit, but they're catching on and they're flying around out there. We also have a saying, if it's not your assignment, it's your assignment. <laughs> so we do, we fly around and, and we guard and, and we guarded really well today. All right. Well, thank you so much, Coach Miller. If this is just the beginning, we're very excited to see what the future holds for you and the Lopes. And we'll see you later in this month with another game here on Fox 10 Extra. Great. Thank you, guys. All right. Well, from the ankle biter down here, we will send it up to the big men in the booth. Barry Scott, take it away. I learned a great um, thing from Coach Miller. If it's not your assignment, it's your assignment. So guess what? It's your assignment to wrap yeah. this one up. Right. I appreciate that, Kate. Thank you so much. We enjoyed uh, both Katie Scott and uh, Coach Miller coming back out after this decisive victory. The first of two against the Vaqueros are back at it tomorrow morning at 11 a.m. But uh, you mentioned it, that energy, man. There is a ton of energy, and I think you got to really tip your cap too, right? These, these uh, returners. Uh, with the first year head coach buying into this uh, and this system. I think the newcomers maybe knew what uh, style of play that Molly Miller was going to bring in her staff, but the, uh, but the returners, the, the players that were holdovers from the previous coaching staff to, to really buy into this, man, they are, that, that was tenacious, each one of them. It really is. I mean, you look at Coach Miller's record at the D2 level, 150 wins in five years, and as you're returning player, you think, okay, I, you know, I'd like to have some of that winning. I go out here and put in the work, and then you see it start to actually, happen. you know, yeah, happen. Uh, you buy in even more because uh, you're quite sure, like, this woman's trying to kill me in practice <laughs> with all of this running and sprints and, and drills and banging and we have to deal defense is not easy to play. Uh, but then when you see it executing in the game like that, like you said, it becomes infectious. Uh, the bench buys in, even though they're not getting minutes, but they're putting in work because you're running up the score on teams. Now they're getting an opportunity to go out there and play as well. Now the starters are cheering for the bench, and they, like he, she says, it just becomes infectious. People love playing that style of basketball where everybody gets to be able to contribute and have fun. Well, you know, Katie Scott loves the style of basketball. She is our Copper State Credit Union player of the game, 18 points and four boards. Uh, she was fantastic tonight early on. She set the tone where they were, she was posting up inside, using good footwork, staying on the glass, or knocking down the outside shots, knocked down a couple three-point shots in that first half. She got into some foul trouble mm -hmm. and had to go to the bench but boy did she come back with a, with a vengeance a vengeance there in that second quarter and, and on into the third and the lopes were were off and running you can see why this woman has one uh young lady rather has won three whack player of the week titles because she could score her points mm -hmm. she could also get her teammates uh, off as well so katie scott contributed a number of other players did as well how about the brown sisters Tiana and Tierra Brown and a sweet feed by uh, Tavia Rowell as well. Yeah, set season high uh, and points, 13 points. I love that sweet behind the back dish. She loved it even more than I did. She had a big crack up on, on the bench with, with Katie Scott. But that's the type of thing that I'm talking about. I mean, this team now 12 and three uh, after this big victory. They'll enjoy this one for a short period of time, but I know one thing, this Coach Miller's going to have them refocused, re-energized to be able to ready to go do it again tomorrow at 11 o'clock. Yeah, they got to get their legs back, and these Vaqueros do as well, this new brand of basketball they're facing against the Lopes. Time to revisit the Sanderson Ford three keys. Best play in a new Ford is at Sanderson Ford. Yeah, it was Miller time. Talked about the Miller uh, defensive issue there. The 26 turnovers right on their number, uh, leading the nation. Uh, that the, the machine, I mean, I think that they powered those points off of those turnovers, they scored some easy points inside. You can see the bench points there. Everyone got a chance to play 2020. And then that sister, hey, sister, soul, sister, go, sister, flow, sister. Wow, they had it. They had it. Right <laughs> yeah, they had it going. And, and, and there was the Brown sisters uh, tonight combining for 26 points. I'd say uh, Tierra with the season high 13 uh, of those uh, 26. So. Nice job, um, all around contributions by all of these ladies tonight. Yep. Like I said, everything's gonna taste a little sweeter tonight um, when you're having their uh, post-game meal.
No doubt about it. But that'll do it from here at GCU Arena, where the afternoon was filled with Lopes Buckets. They beat the Vaqueros 77-55. to Please join us for our next scheduled broadcast on February 19th when GCU men's basketball hosts California Baptist starting at 6.30. But until then, for Kate Longworth, Scott Williams, and our entire crew, I'm Barry Butel, wishing you a wonderful rest of your Saturday afternoon.